And we know now that government by organized money is just as dangerous as government by organized mob. Never before in all our history have these forces been so united against one candidate as they stand today. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. Yes, yes, yes. What's up, world? Welcome to another edition of I Mix What I Like Live. The special edition, I should say, of I Mix What I Like Live. The uh, uh, we'll get to, of course, while we're here in a minute. But I just want to welcome to the to the to the stage, to the screen, uh, my 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 venerable crew and colleagues. The original Killer Bees, the original, the original Hate Awards squad, Dr. Stephen Bro, Dr. Hate, all in the building. Good morning, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. It's glad to be back. Friday morning on the radio, Jared. This is bringing back memories. Friday morning on the on the radio, bringing back memories. If it isn't the most diabolical haters this side of the Mississippi, that's us. It's a good day to hate. Back fellas. again for the eighth annual twenty. <laughs> good day to hate for the eighth annual twenty twenty. And it's horrible. super cross winter solstice. It could get worse. COVID pandemic. White Walker. Boku Foku. Hubert Henry Harrison. Hate awards. The 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 as we were joking. The get out of award shows. The sorry to bother you of political analysis. The satirical comedic look at all that prevents liberation, sovereignty, and revolution. Uh, we want to start off by reminding everybody of just that fact. This is satire. This is parody. This is jokes. This is hate to hate on, you know, what deserves to be hated on and to give tribute to that which has hated well on what deserves to be hated on. And the two rules, as always, of, of importance here are uh, everyone can get it and you must hate harder. So, Historically, all three of us have been award winners. Uh, our, our closest friends and colleagues have been award winners. Everyone does and can get it. And there's so much to hate on, especially after the last year. I think we could not have uh, uh, come together at a better time. So it's good to be back, fellas, and, and to get this thing uh, started a little bit. I just want to say that I'm glad we're naming it after Hubert Henry Harrison, because after slogging over that 1,400 pages... <laughs> of Jeffrey Perry, he he followed these rules. He created these rules because everybody got it under Harrison. I kind of like that. Because <clears throat> everybody, like that. you kind of like what? What's that? I, I, I kind of like the idea that we're, we're going back in history to look at the greatest haters in history. Right. <laughs> and Hubert Henry Harrison has to be one of the greatest haters in history because he's one of the most hated on by the relative silence that the scholarship around all that the black insightful minds have ever produced. So if we know this guy was an invisible person, but the most visible with the analysis at the time, well, then we got to go find these invisible haters and bring life back to them. To quote my upcoming book review for imixwhatilike.org, to hate on Garvey, Du Bois and Washington is a hell of a hat trick. Wow, right on. That's it. So it's perfect that we name and, and of course we invite people <clears throat> after this to go back to I mix what I like dot org and to uh check out the interview done there with Jeffrey Perry, Dr. Jeffrey Perry on Hubert Henry Harrison. And then when we get this new a book review from Dr. Burroughs. We will uh, uh, maybe bring him back and talk about that again separately. Again, uh, please do like, share, and subscribe. Invite people on over. If you are catching this in the replay, please do the same thing and continue, uh, consider becoming a member by clicking the join button to this channel and supporting some new projects and, and some other good work that's going to come up uh, as part of an extended collective. So, all right, fellas, with that, with, with, without further ado, uh, uh, let me just outline for folks the, the coming awards that we have to give uh, throughout the next, you know, however long we're going to be here, 90 minutes or so. 
and uh, and we will we want to also uh, 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 as we talked about we want to invite you all just like the elections of the United States we are inviting you to vote on each category but we make no promises that your vote are going to mean anything or have any impact on the outcome so uh, we invite you to hate we invite the the and again by the way uh, as we put in the the uh, um, the the description at the YouTube and at the link at imixwhatilike.org, uh, just, you know, there is a uh, um, uh, a political, uh, one other political context to this that I want to add before we get to the categories and get into all of this, which is that uh, as the late, great uh, Sophia Bakari of the Black Panther Party uh, has said, you have to be willing to subject to the rapier knife of revolutionary criticism if you are serious about creating a revolution. And of course, that's from her classic, The War Before, The True Life of Becoming a Black Panther, Keeping the Faith in Prison, Fighting for Those Left Behind, came out in 2010. And of course, also the other late, great uh, George Jackson, as he said, I dig people, righteous people. I always have found it hard to relate, to really hate people. Excuse me. I have always found, I always have found it hard to hate anyone. I loved people. I understood from the beginning that the end purpose of life was simply to live, experience, contribute, connect, to gratify the body and mind. I began to hate when I discovered that the mystification was injected intentionally, end quote. And of course, that's from George Jackson, Soledad Brother, the prison letters of George Jackson, uh, published in 1970, I believe. I have the 94 edition in front of me. That's where I'm quoting from. So in other words, we need to be able to critique and we want to add some humor to that critique and that criticism. Uh, but I couldn't echo Jackson's sentiments more. I, I, you know, try to love everything and the hate is only comes when you realize that this is all happening intentionally uh, 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 inspired by the madness and hate of others. So anyway, uh, without further ado, is again the, here we go. The book cat. I'm sorry. The intro to the the award categories coming up. We have the uh, book award. We have the Umar Johnson. Uh, in terms of categories, these aren't the awards, but the category book award. We have Umar Johnson. We have coronavirus. We have the pandemic mm. quarantine. We have Christopher Dorner, Blackfish, Tillicum, Bamboozled to Catch a Predator, Legacy. The shot and Freud and the shooter fraud, frog and scorpion, the Cointel Pro. We just had to add that the Cointel Pro. We had to, or I should say, we had to reinstitute the 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 classic award, the Cointel Bro Award, or the No Intel Bro Award, and then of course the uh, culmination of the Hater of the Year, the vaunted, and as we've also talked about, the hard to maintain, the hard to hold on to Hater of the Year Award. <laughs> There's just so many, there's so many. And it's just hard to maintain that standard. You might get it and have to relinquish it just a few months later. Um, but I anyway, all right. the time I had it. Now yeah. also keep in mind, folks, we're gonna have a vigorous contest for hater of the year. You should be thinking about who's who. Cause some of the candidates might be in the green room and live on stage at the moment. Right. Some of your candidates might be in the red, black, and green room on stage <laughs> waiting in the wings. It's a lot of haters out here. There's a lot of haters. Uh, and that's indeed, 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 Brother Kaba. We see you and shout out to you. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> the votes might not necessarily count. That's right. First rate hate. You, 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 we, hey, we're the hateful world. You know I'm saying, you know. Anyway, okay, so I, I'm I'm starting the clock, and, and if I can, I'm even going to get it on camera so that we can all we can all we're trying to maintain roughly ten minutes per category, uh, and our first up category starting the clock now is the most haterful book of the year award. Can I can I announce the first candidate for this one? Absolutely, my brother. So, folks who are you know somewhat familiar with the work of I Mix What I Like may have heard of this concept of <laughs> buying power this year. And so, our first nominee for the most hateful book of the year award is Dr. Jared Ball himself with the myth of black buying power. And let me so tell you why. Let me tell you why he deserves this award. 
He went after my family. The black press is my family. Ebony Jet is my family. He went after them. He shot him down like it was in The Godfather when he went to the, you know, remember when my man went into the bathroom to get the gun and shoot him down? He shot him down. But I can't deny it. But I can't hey, deny it. It was I not what he said. It was not with any pleasure. Uh and it was, you know, but uh it certainly hey, look, it it, it the reality is the black press, the commercial black press is complicit in the intentional mystification around this buying power mythology. And um, yeah, it, it, as they say, to capture ad revenue and to make the corporate world re respect, as they say, black press, the black press, they help produce this mythology that buying power is real and, and constitutes a power that doesn't exist. So yeah, I, unfortunately, you know, but I am happy to get that award. And unfortunately, I, I don't mind to share some behind the scenes real quick. We had some, some sound effects prepared, but the reality is uh, what I'm realizing is once you go live, other uh, 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 walls e emerge that prevent some of the 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 um, aesthetic flourishes we had planned for, for, for this morning. So uh, please, in your own mind's eye, play an, an applause track in the background as, 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 as we nominate these folks. And I will happily accept this nomination. I'm proud to be nominated for the for the most hateful book of the year award for 2020. And thanks to the committee for the nomination. Uh, do you want to announce the others? One, yeah, I, go I, ahead. I, yes, let me just announce, because our next one, is one of our uh, fan favorites, one of our local heroes, um, who I I think you two can take credit for introducing to a larger segment of the population mm -hmm. before his book had really caught fire. This is Frank Wilderson, and his recent release, Afro Pessimism, is a like Afro Pessimism is a theory of hate. I'm gonna just claim it as that. This is you know hate for theory on the conditions of African people. I think it's inspired so much hate. It's 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 attracted hate from all different segments. And we can see the again in the archives of our mix what I like, all of the folks that are coming to the fore to say, I hate this man. I so Frank, man. for your work in Afro pessimism, you getting to get this nomination too. And then, and then, why don't you take this last one? Because you, you were fuming. I ain't never seen you frog so much, Jared. You were fuming at this last one. With Me, your be back member. Yeah, but act like you wasn't fuming, bro. You was fuming on the next one. Talk about this you next interview you did with the next nominee. Uh, so our next nominee is is our dear brother from from the from, from the Blacklash Collective, which is reconvening here shortly. So check out mixwhatilike.org for for that as well. Uh, but but Dr. Quasi Carnadu for his book, which which his his latest, our own way in this, in in this part of the world, a biography of an African community, culture, and nation. Who during his last visit to to I mix what I like live dropped uh, some some heavy criticism of of Kwame and Krumah that admittedly threw me for a loop. I wasn't ready. Uh, uh, can't say I agree. And and many in the audience were were were, were uh, confused and, and and in some shockful disagreement. So we will have to reconvene on that. Uh, but for the for the critique that basically Nkrumah was not uh, you know culturally attuned well enough to 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 uh advance the the liberation of 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 Ghana and Africa in general uh more or less is is the the over summer, uh, summary of the point is uh i mean that was pretty heavy man so but but as a hater he did what the haters must do second rule hate harder <laughs> so he made us up our game on saying well this is why you can't come after Nkrumah but the first rule is Anybody could get it. Anybody could get it. And it was it was a clash of the titans and the claymation characters. It was a beautiful thing to watch. Wow. I was dying watching that joint. I was like, uh-oh, he going for the head of Medusa at this point. He ain't playing with this cracking no more, gentlemen. He got the head of Medusa on this joint. He tried to Harry Harryhausen references here. I love them, Doctor. You love that? You know, <laughs> Harry Harryhausen. You know, I'm afraid of pronunciation, right, Doctor Ball? So you know, of course, I'm mispronouncing this all over the place. 
No Keep doubt. it up. We love it. We love it. We love all the 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 the, the Gunner Midro references. Yes. The, this is but that was about a presentation I did where I mispronounced Gunner Midro. I think I think I did like five times. You five still times. did it again, and I <laughs> love it. See, it just it doesn't work. whatever. <laughs> He wasn't Du Bois, he wasn't Cox, he wasn't a lot of people, so let him get it. But Dr. Connadu is my publisher, and he definitely deserves his hate nomination. Absolutely. That was so an incredible congratulations. Applause. Congratulations to him. Are you all hearing those applause? Faintly, faint, faint applause. Faint, a little bit. All six from far. people in the audience is just low-key hating. They like, yeah, whatever. Who, who gonna get the award? How are we on the clock? <clears throat> we have... Oh, it, it even faded out. We have three and a half minutes left on this one. And we have two okay. more nominees. So Okay, so the, the next one is an important one, right? Because we were talking about the African world with Kwesi Konadu. Um, you know, and he is a publisher, as Dr. Burroughs said. Um, but then the next one is somebody we know as one of the old guard in this in this community of African thinkers and African movers. An African shaker raise, right? So, and another the next previous one, nominee, and a previous nominee. Matter of fact, he could get the Legacy Award, right? Because <laughs> the next one is Leonard Jeffries. Dr. Now, Leonard I, now Jeffries. I, I, I appreciated his publication blank. <laughs> I noticed you have blank next to his name, right? So clearly, he wrote a book called Blank. I thought blank. Like, I, you know, I, you know, I review books for you, right? Blank was such a great book. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I published, I published, I published, I mix what I like, a review on blank, right? You just go to it, go to I mix, look for it. You can't and find that's it. Why, and that's why you're going to be coming up later uh, for another nominee yourself. Listen, Listen Todd, man. when you taught us how to read Invisible Ink from the Invisible Book, I was like, this is an incredible deciphering skill right here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. It takes a lot of skill to write blank. That's messed up. Very true. Now, let's just say this real quickly, right? When that Harlem debate came up and asked if Obama was good for black people, and Dr. Jeff got up and said, yes, Malcolm would be down with Obama. And Mumia, he put the political prisoners on death row as in support of Obama. And I was like, that's it, man. He said he, said, he said Obama's election signaled the end of white supremacy. That that was it. And that's that all that it. I mix what I like.org. People can go listen to that too if they want. Why don't you take the last one? The last one, the last nominee for the most hateful book of the year award is Julian Assange for WikiLeaks, not for a particular book, but but for being booked, maybe for being held in bookings <laughs> permanently, uh, uh, for for exposing the the war crimes and the the international crime of the United States government. This man is being persecuted and prosecuted at all all kinds of levels. So, uh, uh, we added him to the most hateful book of the, the year. So so the nominees are Jared Ball for, for the Myth of Black Buying Power, Frank Wilderson for Afro-Pessimism, Kwesi Carnadu for Our Own Way, Dr. Leonard Jeffries for Blank, and Julian Assange for WikiLeaks. We invite you all to cast your votes, to quickly cast your votes. And then are we going to announce the winner now or are we going to come back at the end? Are we doing this? I forgot how we were doing it this No, year. we got to announce this now. No, but we got to kick gotta, it now. We, we gotta give them a few seconds to vote. Are they voting, uh, Jared? Uh, I'm looking in the chat. I don't see any. I see. <laughs> I see some wows and some <laughs> dams. I see some uhs. I see some 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 some. I don't know. With some central booking. That was <laughs> that here. Washington. Oh, here we go. Wilderson got the vote. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, uh, there's a vote for me. Up oh, there's okay. the there's the. The time's up. The category. There's a, a Dr. Chile <laughs> votes for me. Thank you, Dr. Chile. <laughs> Ms. Cambridge, thank you for the vote for me as well. Uh oh, uh oh. I think I'm getting a channel bias. Well, we already know these elections are rigged, so my vote <laughs> is going to the myth of black bio power because. <laughs> It's not going to end up the way we need it to end up once we get to where we need to go. So 
if this is a hateocracy, who gonna win? So, so I vote for me too. So that's that's I, I, I concur. Let's let's give it to Dr. Ball. I mean, you know, when you when you go out to my entire family, that's a wonderful thing. There it is. All right. It was close though. It was close. I don't have a particular speech ready, prepared, but but I want to thank the committee. I want to thank the, the 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 haters that have hated before me and the haters that will hate after me. I want to thank. Uh, we need that Snoop Dogg version. We need the Snoop Dogg. The I Snoop want to thank, Dog, I want to for thank me for being me and writing the book. <laughs> so so. Absolutely. Thank you again. I am uh, uh, now I can add another hate award to my mantle. Uh, um, I'm a multiple award winning, you know, hate award winner. And now I can officially tell people that I am the award winning author of the myth and propaganda of black buying power. So mm -hmm. thank you all very much. Thanks to the committee. Uh, and we are right on schedule. So moving on again, we are uh, you are joining us at the uh, Mix What I Li Mix What I Like Live Special Edition, eighth annual, twenty twenty, and it's horribilis super cross winter solstice. It could get worse. COVID nineteen pandemic. White Walker, Boku, Foku, Hubert Henry Harrison hate awards, and we've just gone through the first. Uh, category, the most hateful book of the year award, and uh, I have thankfully and happily won that award. So. Uh, moving on to the next category, uh, which I see here is the Best Umar Johnson Bully Hater Cottage Industry Award. Woo! What we need what to hit the clock is, is, is that? the clock on? Is, is the, the clock, clock on? Is, clock is now on. So let's let's just get this straight, right? It at any top or end of the year in the Gregorian calendar. Umar Johnson is one of these people who is known to set stuff off. <laughs> he is giving us phone calls without the phone ringing, and the phone call that he's on suddenly rings again. And we're like, Umar, I thought you was on the phone. How we hear that joint? He is giving us rants about who he's better than. He's giving us some famous Shakespearean phrases. Umar gives us some life at the end of the year, right? So now, we all know Umar's collecting funds to open up a building that's going to eventually become a school. Cool. People are donating. Cool. But there's a whole group of folks out there who have now turned and looked at Umar and said, wait, this guy's got something going on here. He's raising funds by making videos. And he's not going to open that school. So what if we start critiquing Umar? And there's one person who stands out in the crowd. We could look at, you know, the, the anti Svengali something something person. They, they put out these amazing documentaries. But there is one person that Umar has named, you know, in a list of five folks or so. Some people he said is like a school counselor that stole his work. There's uh, somebody else out there who is doing whatever. But the main person who has made an industry out of this joint is Lennon Honor. And I've spent some time watching his videos and I'm like, you disagreeing with some stuff about Umar that most and just, folks can. Go ahead, please. I'm sorry, just to be clear, because I want to make sure you, you said his name is Lennon Honor. Yes. Not and, that he's a socialist. This is a dude who's made, made a name for himself hating on Umar Johnson. He has made documentaries. Like, let me give an example, right? Umar pulls these stunts that you got to appreciate, right? So when the wind blows, Ancestors is talking, you know, knocks down a cell phone. Just some great comical moments, right? We're not making fun of the Ancestors, just the antics, right? Whatever his situation is, that's his situation. He's just putting out a lot of videos. And because he's putting out so many videos, folks can take them, critique them, and make videos about him. So this dude literally made like a five part series about a five minute video that Umar created. Now it was, it was kind of funny because Umar made this video about like, you know, there was a protest and people were coming to protest in school. And so he made like a counter protest rally video. And it's just, it's, it's comedy, but if it's a five minute protest, you know, with, with, I don't know how many people were there. 
But if it's a five minute video and you make it a five part <laughs> documentary series for three hours each part, I'm like, you're going a little bit much, bro. So now that cottage industry is getting another cottage industry where <laughs> folks be like, we gonna check your pockets and see how much you making off of these anti Uber videos. And so it is the most wonderful thing to watch the cottage industries go grow cottage industries. So I, the nominee is uh, Lennon Honor and the other five people that are named. I don't think I watched enough Umar videos to know who those other people are. But, you know, everybody got their haters out there. And some of Umar's have risen to the ranks of money getters. You know what so I mean? I, so they, so they they so, Dr. Hey, you're saying that Blank is Umar Johnson's favorite book, Dr. Jeffrey's Blank. Wow. Because Blank is also what he's what Umar's produced, right? Blank, right? Okay. So, with those blanks in play, what you're saying is that as a result of these zeros, other zeros have come about that are attached to other numerals. Is, is that right, Dr. Haight? Is that what you're saying? It's, it's in a very twisted world. You know, Umar once won the Emperor Has No Clothes Award on this very hate award show himself. And now we at the point of looking at it like, wait a minute, these folks are on the internet bullying Umar Johnson. And I did not think we would get to this point. I don't know what's crazy. And we had been, you know, I don't know if it's picking up, but we had, you know, he's even been immortalized in 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 audio drop as part of the hate awards. I would I would slightly disagree, Dr. Burroughs. I wouldn't say that he's produced blank in 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 total. Uh, uh, some might, you know, uh, you know, he has produced work. He's written. He's published. He's written. He's got a lot of videos and lectures, and he's produced at least the the skeleton of a school, right? Uh, I think I think what I've appreciated about Dr. Hate's criticism. Uh, over the over, over these last few years is that while it is sometimes easy to be critical of the performance, at least, of Dr. Johnson, that this newly spawned category of hating on Dr. Johnson is equally hateable on and equally, you know, uh, uh, you know, should be equally uh, put on the table for critique, which I, I think is fantastic. I think that's and, and over the last couple of years, I have to admit, it has changed some of my views on Dr. Johnson himself and in, in the way he has been responded to by particularly those who are claiming to be doing or wanting to be doing uh, in terms of African people, uh, something good or positive uh, in and above what he's doing. So anyway, now um, we, we do have one the nominee in this category and uh, just under four minutes left on this topic, just, just FYI. Thank you, thank you. We also know some folks came to, to crush Umar and it didn't go quite the way they thought it was going to go. Right. And I'm looking at all, all of those folks who are arising after Umar crushed their leader as like the Martinets. So when he went on Roland Martin, people was like, oh, Roland about to get him. Roland about to get him. And he went on Roland Martin and he was like, yeah, this is my degree. This is what I studied. This is where I'm certified to do my work. And he was clear. It was, it was, it was hilarious. And I was like, he not like Pickens. Don't just be thinking you're going to roll up face to face in a battle with him and think that it's going to go well. And we'll see how That's it right. went for some of the other folks who were nominated, how it went when they rolled up and said, I'm, I'm ready to take on Umar. Right. That's real. That's that's real. And 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 in fact, we have something that I mix with. I like dot org with Dr. Kim is Shockley, uh, you know, uh, uh, on just that video, on that discussion with Roland and, and, and Dr. Johnson, where where, like you said, people thought they were going to show up and, and, and drop something on them. And but when you are a reactionary and a conservative, it's hard to be critical of somebody uh, uh, doing that kind of work, even even if there's room for them to be critiqued. So. This is very anyway. educational. So, so Umar Johnson's accomplishment is what? He is the most sought after something who goes around the world and speaks on behalf of the plight of Black people 
Um, but his claim to fame really is school psychology. He's trying to make sure that black children don't end up in special education courses by testing means that actually um, are built and designed to make sure these same black children are put into special education. You know, so he's created parent advocacy groups and things like that, right? So, you know, he'd go around and be like, I am the number one person doing this and I am the number one requested scholar doing this. And I'd be like, I got no arguments with that. It's not a problem for me. But when I saw people start being like, I'm going to call up the school that invited him and get them to disinvite him. Wow. And that would actually work. I was like, oh, now you messing with this man's bread. Like, when you know, when people start messing with your bread, that's when you know that counter protests are serious. Right. And that's when, you know, these folks are organized in a different way. They weren't saying ideologically they disagree with the idea that black children should be in special education. What's the problem with that? Then there's another group of folks who were like, why is Umar Johnson accepting applications for a wife? That joint is just hilarious. Like he want to see resumes before he gets married. Now, you know, there's all kind of personal critiques and whatnot, but then that opens up the door for everybody who throws that stone to now show their hand. And so Lennon Honor showed his hand and the cottage industry is exploding on Lennon, Lennon Honor right now. Shout out to all of y'all for making videos and, and getting money off this stuff. I enjoy good comedy. Uh, yeah, so as so as as we're about to have to wrap up on this topic, we got the other the the, the second nominee is is listed here as a school counselor who uh, Umar alleged stole his work. Uh, you want to quickly elaborate on that? Uh, uh, no, nah, not not really. I just want to see them get into the battle, and I think that joint could happen. Like I think if the school folks get together and be like, who came out with this work first? We could get to the bottom of that one. But plagiarism is a problem, people. Plagiarism is a problem. Jared, boy, I think you've experienced plagiarism, which plagiarism is, you know, is academic a plagiarism. Yeah. Yeah. Plagiarism, yes. Plagiarism is a major, major problem. Anyway. You mean when you have an idea for a center of race in media and you submit it, and then two years later, Somebody says I have an idea for center of race. I mean, you, you mean that? That is that is that is that what we're talking well, about? Well, no, because mine was the Race and Media Research Center, and theirs was the Institute for Journalism and Community Research. Or something. <laughs> like, I, I, that, I, I saw that old. movie. Yeah. Anyway, I, anyway, I saw I saw that movie. They was like, "You got the golden arcs." And we got the golden arches. <laughs> and I think like, part two is on its way, right? There it is. There well, it is. Well, it looks like we don't really have any debate about, about who this award is. No, is. so we could we could go ahead and yeah, give this okay. year's best Umar Johnson Bully Hater College Award, a college cottage industry award to the good Lennon Honor, and congratulations <clears throat> to him. Uh, on that award, and uh, we wish him, of course, well. <clears throat> All right, good people. All right, good people. Uh, oh, 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 just real quick. A text from, you think, you all think Dr. Hate is anonymous. Uh, well, super spousy is super anonymous, but had to text in and remind that there was a uh, a, a brother that did a TED talk. Some say he even favors me a little bit. That sounded a lot like something I had done too. So I appreciate I appreciate that that late that late reminder of of classic hateable uh, plagiarism. Uh, anyway, um, uh, all it takes is shout out to so and so, rocking on a similar idea, and it's all good. But all right, good people. Uh, uh, the next, the next category up is the biggest coronavirus L. Uh, anybody want to start with, with, with this list of <laughs> nominees for the biggest coronavirus L and we are on the clock? Well, I mean, you have, uh, black people, 
we got crushed is in the parentheses and in terms of our notes because we did get crushed for real. Um, I mean, should we talk about that for a second before we go into the other categories? We can. Uh, and in fact, I would just want to shout out uh, uh, some work that that I contributed to that should be dropping, I think, today on the, the impact of COVID, uh, the, the history and condition of black business and the impact of COVID on black businesses. And uh, getting crushed is is it's, it's, it's one thing to say you've been crushed when you have already when you are already flat and dismembered from previous crushings. So. So, uh, yeah, that's just one. Certainly one example. Um, uh, whether it's the higher rates in certain areas, whether it's the lack of health care uh, and death rates, uh, black people certainly uh, have been uh, uh, have earned the nomination for the biggest coronavirus L. And, and well, the black, other business, reason, it, it, black business is the second category, by the way, the second uh, uh, nominee. And then the, the other reason that we put black people up there is because if you remember at the very beginnings of this thing, folks were saying, oh, but I don't know anybody and I don't see any black people getting it. Right. And then right. all of these writings came out about how it could be the great equal, equal what, right? It's going to be the great equalizer. And you had folks, folks I know, who were like, I don't know anybody getting it. I don't know any children getting it. It's not happening in Africa. And all of these discussions, like we weren't going to get it. And then suddenly March hit and it was like cities was under siege by the air on some M. Night Shyamalan type vibe. It was crazy. Took some of your favorite people, some of my favorite people, some of our favorite people got got by this coronavirus. That's right. So Black mm -hmm. folks got crushed by this joint. That's right. And in hey. fact, I think, you know, and I said this at some point, you know, earlier in the year or last year, but I think at some point when those early reports were saying uh, in the commercial press that black and brown people were getting hit hardest. Mm -hmm. I think that led to the spread among white folks throughout the country, because I think sort of the inverse of what you're saying, Dr. Haight, is that they heard those stories and were saying, that's how I always thought of it. And that's what we always wanted. And that's what we always knew. Them black and brown savages, they're the ones getting all diseased up. We're not going to get it. Let's go out here and have what quote unquote super spreader gatherings. And let's go out here. And, you know, and so it was almost like a, 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 in that in that regard, somewhat paradoxically, it did become a leveling event. Um, because white folks, a lot of white folks, I think, took the early messaging as a as a, as code for them to say it's not real for us. So let's go on out there and 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 be ourselves, so to speak, and take our hoods off. Take and the hoods off. Y'all couldn't wait to wear hoods at one point. Now you can't wait to take your mask off. I can't wait to take your time, ladies and gentlemen. Confusing times. It's 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 the, the right the unmasking the 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 masking and unmasking of whiteness now the other categories are black housing and black workers anybody want to say about that before we get to the last one so if we were to just to say black workers like the frontline folks that we saw in the hospitals and the service industry the workers right these were the folks who were asked to stay at work and encounter all of the people who either were walking around asymptomatic with the coronavirus or walking around maskless, like they weren't just in a large gathering and we're a super spreader event. And black folks who were on the front lines at work have been asked to just risk themselves without any preparation of the actual companies for the PPE, the personal protection equipment that would be required to have folks in space. All of the ideas of social distancing, we weren't seeing that. And these would be the same companies that were getting them loans from the government for the coronavirus, for the effects on their businesses who would still be having the workers there. And once they get the loan, then they fire them. Right. Hey, then I just uh, we talked about this off air. I just want to want to throw this up here real quick. Um, uh, 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 Garrett Harris here. Uh, we're not meaning to make light of loss. In fact, quite the opposite. And in fact, 
without being, I think, overly sharing or, or personal. Uh, I think the three of us have experienced quite a bit of personal and immediate uh, loss or experience with this. So, so it's not that at all. We don't mean to make light of it, uh, uh, certainly at all. The point is, with as with everything with these satirical, uh, 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 you know, look at, at, at 2020, we're trying to make some light of of some very real, you know, uh, problems. So, so please don't mis misunderstand. Again, this is meant to be satire and to hate on what is hating on us, uh, or to to give awards to those who are hating on what is hating on us uh, appropriately. So that's 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 really the the the, the, the thrust here. So uh, again, yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to make that quick point uh, and collect the pain of loss. And remember who did this to you. Mm. Wasn't no bats in Wuhan. Mm. Wu Tang Clan had nothing to do with this. <laughs> but nobody had no meat market eating bat wings. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. We don't need to say this is a conspiracy theory. You know who those folks are and what they packed on the boats before they came and met anybody around any island they thought was in the East Indies? That's right. That's right. And you as they were. And as the paper I'm talking about starts with on on black business, it's 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 the whole point of the it, the issue is is not the virus itself; it's the precondition that is that the people are meeting it with that is the problem. Uh, and certainly, none. So people can point to the origins of the virus all we want. It, that's not the issue; it's the precondition uh, of the people that is the issue, and and, and the the uh, arrangements of of healthcare and other things that that are the issue. So absolutely. If I can go to the last category. Yeah, go ahead, because um, we got three minutes left on this category. And I think this is important because it's, it's media, right? So the so the last category in terms of who lost was Skype, Periscope, and basically social media in general. And, and as I said to you guys last night, we prepped. It's like Skype, you know, with Zoom, Skype has now become like Friendster. Right. <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> look, look, MySpace was important for Black folks, too. <laughs> It taught coding. It wasn't just the platform that you had to lay out. Black folks were doing some beautiful things with MySpace. Black was Planet. It, what was it when on what we are Black Planet? On my what's up, Black Planet, right? So Black Skype is the, new, Skype is the new Black Planet. Uh, but now the difference is, the funny thing is, and you know, Twitter ripped this joint apart, right? They were like, Skype, you had a running head start <laughs> on Zoom, and you still couldn't keep up. That's so this right. will show you, like, like the, the tech world is going to move in directions. But the other thing is, all it's done is put us all online in that virtual world. And this, um, my goodness, man. Hey, I love so, this, 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 that push for change here has a late nomination for, for Dr. Fauci for the biggest Corona uh, virus mm -hmm. board. Uh, oh, you said his know. name wrong, though. You said his name wrong. What I say? Look at it again. Put the, put the thing back up. Let me te teach put you how to pronounce Italian. Uh, uh, oh, hold on. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. This is the faux chi. The faux chi. You know That's he was it. faking the energy up there, looking like he wasn't in lockstep with Trump. He'd be mm -hmm. like, "I disagree with you putting light beams inside somebody with your Darth Vader mess, spraying lights all inside somebody." Please don't try mm -hmm. that again, right? This was a faux chi. We look into this dude. Like he was going to be a logical one. And I was like, I don't trust you neither. All your allergies and infectious disease. I don't trust your whole National Institutes of Health. All your CDC, L. NIH, L's. Right? All of these folks was lying about it. It's not an airborne disease. Remember what they used to tell you at first? And we already knew it was airborne because when you would see the Asian folks in Toronto when SARS came out in 2004 walking around with the masks, you were like, okay, somebody's masked up. That's why one of them br brilliant folks who was like, I'm going to buy all the N95 masks and can't nobody get them was like, I'm going to make a million dollars off this joint. Mm. Well, anyway, so we, 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 we have come to the end of the time on this category uh uh dr fauci has another another or i'm sorry dr fauci has another late nomination for, you know, you, you, for sister ricky ryan uh absolutely hate 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 um uh so anyway black people black business black housing black workers skype periscope and social media who who is getting 
this year's uh, 2020 Hubert Henry Harrison Biggest Coronavirus L Hate Award? My vote is for Skype. Mm. Yeah, I can't give black people no L's. Black people have had enough L's, so 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 I, I'll I'll go ahead and concur with that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw just so we have uh, on the record uh, a, a vote for the late nominee. I'm gonna go ahead and throw mine in for the, for 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 Dr. Fo Chi, but but we will go ahead and give. Uh, but but you know, uh, two against one wins. So congratulations to social media and uh, Periscope and all of the the, the the that crew for winning this year's biggest coronavirus L hate award. So fellas, congratulations. We're staying right on schedule, right on, on time uh, as we move forward uh, for this special edition of I Mix What I Like live, the eighth annual 2020 Annis Horribilis Supercross winter solstice. It could get worse. COVID pandemic, White Walker, Boku, Foku, Hubert Henry Harrison hate awards, the get out of award shows, the sorry to bother you of political analyses. Let's move on with Doctors Burrow and Hate Burrows and Hate to the next category, which as I see here is pandemic quarantine. Last night a DJ saved my life hater award. Kind of going in a different direction on this one. Uh uh kind of in like a like a semi quarter of the way positive hate in the negating the negation sense of the phrase or the term yup yup should i give the nominees this time is it my turn who wants to do the nominees go ahead listen man since you are the funkinist you uh, might as well talk about the djs and what the djs do like this is per- come on son so so here we go we have uh i'll just run through the nominees at least one good time and then we can come back but but the nominees for the pandemic quarantine last night at DJ Save My Life Hater Award are DJ D Nice for the club quarantine, DJ Spinner for Stevie Party, DJ Cassidy for what, what was the what was that called the 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 memory pass off handoff live mixtape history lesson joint that thing was vicious VZ sets the verses set son. The oh verses is that what it's I didn't know what that was the verses sets you can come versus. back and, clean and clarify yeah. that Steve McQueen for his series that that we've been talking about a lot on 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 uh, with with our brothers African Arise and others and Dr. Icelli Icelli and and Swan uh, the Steve McQueen uh, uh, small act series of course my main man Davy D's quarantine mixes which have been vic- vicious which included speaking uh, uh, of dude that some say carried a little bit of my likeness uh Jasiri X with uh 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 Draco's for Baco uh and and the brother Chris Smalls protesting Amazon leading a new movement of course we've hosted him at I mix what I like live and on air Qu- quit my Amazon Prime account so D nice spinner Cassidy the versus set Steve McQueen Davy D quarantines mix chris smalls we are definitely on the clock for this category what do you want to say about the, the folks on this and maybe clarify the verses sets dr hate so first off d nice the 808 we got to go back to self-destruction when he was spinning for that joint right d nice been a part of some movements in hip-hop that has always been counter to the violence against black people and we know this to be true. Once we in the greatest bonds of our life, it is the African culture that brings us back to a semblance of sanity. So we knew we had something to look forward to at the night when in the morning you were listening to the bell tolls and who passed, right? Mm-hmm. Listening to the news and what happened. Mm-hmm. Eventually we got smart enough to turn off the news and turn up the DJs and folks was moving like we used to move in the 70s and 80s and maybe somebody in the 90s, 2000s up to now, still move like that. DJ D Nice put on the music and made people dance in their homes with club quarantine. And it became the move, just like any party. Yo, you going to that quarantine set? 
Were you at that quarantine set? Did you hear what he did? DJ did his thing. And this is why we always give tributes to the DJ. Last night, a DJ saved my life. So right in the on. same vein, my DJ for life, DJ Spinner. Right? Absolutely. Who's golden. If y'all had a chance, we talked about it on the radio before. We've had Spinner on the radio before. Go back and listen to the interview with the Spinner. If y'all been to a Spinner set in person, it is like any ring shout in the plantation that you could possibly have where folks is now free to be in a space where we feeling righteous. And then, you know, Stevie might just pop up and perform a couple sets. And so Spinner brought that to the, to the quarantine club series. And, and I got to also say, D Nice was passing off the tables for other people to get on. It wasn't like he was the only one. He was putting connections in for other DJs to move. That was just a beautiful thing. Big up to the DJs, right? And then DJ Cassidy, of course, like I think you described that well. If folks haven't seen that DJ Cassidy set, you know the golden era is a hip hop. He took everybody back to, to Run DMC, re-performing his classic line and pass the mic, thank you. Um, two years ago, a friend of mine asked me to say some MC rock, and immediately people was lacing up the fat laces. Right, folks was like, "Oh man, LL came on, did a verse." Everybody was doing their best in the classics, right? Live, so it was a beautiful thing. Um, and it's Steve yeah, McQueen. Great. Talk a little bit about that, please. Well, it was just the the small act series uh, uh, dealing with with uh, the African diaspora in 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 the UK primarily the the and uh, uh, with with uh, the brother uh, uh, Ellie from Africans Arise and Doctor Zichile and Swan and and uh, um, you know we had some some rousing conversations about just the history and context. Uh, you know, once on my platform here, once on Africans Arise, uh, a lot of, you know, it's interesting. And, and of course, on the Africans Arise, they also, he also did a, a more full review just a, 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 of, 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 of those films also. So it was good to get to, you know, rap with, 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 you know, brothers, uh, from that part of the world. Uh, Kevin ba Cobham, uh, uh, you know the, the 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 attorney was involved with that too. Um, uh, uh, anyway, so yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, so it was just dope. It was it was it was nice. Uh, you know, with all of its imperfections, it was a nice you know uh, point of departure for us to talk about the the African experience in the diaspora, and particularly that part of the world where not a lot of people pay attention. I think it, you know compared to the continent. Or this side of the diaspora, uh, uh, as you know, the the UK doesn't get that much focus, and there's a lot that has gone on that connects very much to the struggles over here. So it was it was it was dope. It was dope. For that and reason, the reason home. the reason I like this joint is it pulled out one of our favorite brothers uh, from the archives back into the present moment, and we saw the return of a mighty hater himself, whose book, whose book on um. Paulo Karma Cafego could have been up for a, a book award. It just wasn't a hateful book. It was a masterful book on the travels throughout the African diaspora. Although, is although I think we could have made the argument that Dr. Swan's book hates on so much so-called black power scholarship. Uh, and and biography. And, and so-called mm. biography, exactly. Uh, wait, 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 wait. You mean you mean when the biography is already written by the person himself in the autobiography, like let's say, like you know, Paulo Carmichael, who wrote his own autobiography, like um, what's that guy's name? Kwame uh, to to some one Trump of them Trump. guys' names, right? Trump. And then and then the governor comes along and says, "I'm going to write the definitive biography." after the autobiography came out. And not even mention the autobiography. And not mention the autobiography. Well, what I mean is when someone says I'm writing a biography, 
and doesn't go to where the, the guy grew up, doesn't interview anybody or barely interviews anybody, doesn't check any documents, doesn't go to the library. I mean, it's bad enough we have african centered scholars who know more about places in Africa than they know more about the the uh, the document sections in their own libraries. Like it's, it's bad enough that they go to Africa more than they go to the the uh, the sections of their own libraries where there are documents, right? It's even worse when you have people who then claim, well, I don't even need to know that. I'm a biographer, so I'm just going to write a book. I'm going to do what I want to do, and it's going to be accepted, and it's going to get awards. Now, you contrast that with Keto Swan, who, as Dr. Ball you know, showed in that great interview, he read all the documents, he traveled to those places, he met the villages, he did all of the work. And that's that's what I'm talking about, a real biography versus a Fox biography. Uh, 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 that's why it's so, a faux coup, bo, bo coup, faux coup. Hate so, war. So let me just get this straight. What you saying is Dr. Keto Swan could get the Uncle Traveler Matt Fraggle Rock with Noko Rashidi Pan-African Traveler Award for the 2020 Hate Awards. That's it. I'm saying he can get the John Henry Clark Read All the Documents Award, Knows All the Sources Award. That's important. That's important. Because if we didn't add Keto Swan to this mix, it might be considered hate. But that is not the goal. We're going to seal up all of the places where people think hate can enter. Protect folks, right? Now, let's get back to this list here. Who is our winner for the pandemic quarantine last night? The DJ Save My Life Hater Reward. By the way, y'all finish it up real quick. I just wanted just to say that 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 again, Davey D, uh, 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 a big friend of, of, of mine in the program, of course, uh, pioneer in hip hop journalism and broadcasting, uh, you know, broke out. He's got a whole bunch of quarantine mixes that have been fire. Uh, and then Chris Smalls, uh, you know, sort of, sort of, um, I guess, DJing a labor movement, uh, you know. But by the way, some people, you know, uh, um, uh, Dr. Ichile mentions Ninth Wonder. Uh, there was a couple of of shout outs to, to his work. Um, uh, you know, uh, da, 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 there was another, there was a few that reminded us of some other things that have gone on. So, so obviously we're not getting everybody, everything, uh, a couple votes for, uh, DJ Spinner. Oh, we appreciate, uh, brother Chad here recognizing 360 degrees of hate. We love the, we love the puns. We love that. Um, uh, yeah, ear doctor and minister server segments on renegade culture absolutely deserve shout outs. D Nice has a vote here. Uh, what about full blast radio? Uh, 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 an anti vote for small acts. Do we, you know, <laughs> uh, we love that too. Uh, Erica Badu's quarantine concert. Oh, no the doubt. verse. We ain't even talk about the verses. We ain't talk about the verses. Uh, oh, the, the verses was something special, and it it will it will tell you that black folks know how to get through a hard moment. Now, I what that eventually does. Time on this subject, by the way, on this category, just we've hit the time. That's, that's why I gotta address this comment here, right? Yeah, what I that eventually it. does is say that other folks are going to come in and capitalize and commodify and then usurp the power of that movement, right? So I agree, no problem there. We are gonna get to this point. I like anxious and ambitious haters who are like fast forward to the one I wanna get to. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. But the verses said we also fun. appreciate this comment from Ricky Ryan at verses playing cover for her die. Uh and we get a shout out for, for the live streams here and for KRS's new album. So we have some 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 late votes, late editions. Uh, but uh uh are we ready to, to cast our vote? Oh yeah. Cause to be honest with you, I didn't really like any of the versus artists that I that they put out there. I, I just thought it was a good idea. <laughs> I just thought it was a good idea. 
<laughs> right they didn't on. put the folks that I would want to see it versus, right? Now, um, I'm never going to vote against DJ Spinner. Mm. Yeah, that's mm. tough, man. I'm uh, never voting against DJ Spinner. And that DJ Spinner, Stevie party where Stevie showed up in D.C. is still a, 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 a top, I don't know, I don't know, easy top five highlight. I don't know if it's higher than that yet in my life. Um, but, but yeah, that's a tough one, but my man, Davey, man, you know, shout out to Davey D. I don't know, but I, I think, yeah, I think I have to go with, with Spinner on this one too. Right. So that's it. I mean, Todd, you ain't vote, but, but I, I missed all of this. So you guys got to go take this. So two out of three anyway. So congratulations to DJ Spinner, feel free to let the brother know that he is the the, the 2000, the 2020 winner of the pandemic quarantine last night. The DJ saved my life. Hate award. Congratulations to him. Uh, I'm sure he will value this this award uh, greatly. Uh, um, you know, congratulations. Definitely congratulations. So listen, we are we are through the first hour, right on schedule through the first hour of the eighth annual 2020 Annis Horribilis Supercross Winter Solstice. It could get worse. COVID pandemic, White Walker, Boku, Foku, Hubert Henry Harrison, Hate Awards. Uh, and we are moving on to the next topic here with my brothers, Doctors Hate and Burroughs, uh, to the Nat Turner. Christopher Dorner Tillicum Award. And Dr. Haight, do you want to say anything in, in, in uh, uh, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Context or description about the name of this award and how we've come to put it together? Yes. Yeah, so it's nice to think about the historic efforts of African people to liberate themselves from the confines of white supremacist depression. But it's also nice to think about what people are doing currently. And if you can celebrate what Nat Turner did and say the conditions haven't changed, then the people who engage in a Nat Turner-like activity should also be recognized for engaging in the hate that hate produced. So if you celebrate Nat, then you got to look at Christopher Dorner, who gave you this wonderful, wonderful run on saying, I tried all of the democratic ways to achieve justice within the police department and found that at every turn I was denied and then it turned on me. So instead of allowing you all to carry out the injustice, I will carry forth justice myself and find you. And Christopher Dorner went out there and found his targets and then eventually had to go on the run and found his demise at the hands of a president. Which president was that again? Oh, that was uh, that was during Obama's term. And how did they get him? They found him holed up in the wilderness inside his cubby hole. And they dropped a bomb on this dude. Now, Christopher Dorner, we ain't gonna forget about you. And then Tillicum. Can I just add real quick about Dorner that I think it's important to point out that he was a cop, that he saw the, the firsthand vicious racist abuse of the police on black and brown people. He saw black and brown and Asian participants along with that abuse. He tried to let people know about it. I read his manifesto back in the day when everybody, you know, uh, uh, and for whatever people want to say about him, uh, they, just like they said about John Brown and many others, when I remember reading John Brown's, uh, going to the library and reading his statement to the court and saying, this man wasn't crazy. You know, again, however you feel about his behavior, it wasn't crazy. Uh, and he was saying, I tried to petition, I tried to submit reports, I tried to whistleblow, I tried to, you know, quietly maneuver around it, and it was impossible. Uh, and it, it pushed him to where he felt that his only conclusion was to take violent action against those who he saw doing it against everybody else. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to add that that quick point real quick. But go ahead, please. 
And so it was it was the logical conclusion that you don't reason with terrorists and you mm. don't negotiate with terrorists mm. and you don't look for moral reasoning from terrorists mm. and you don't look for hope with terrorists. They will terrorize you if you do that. So now Tillicum, there's a whole documentary called Blackfish came out a couple of years ago on Netflix and talked about how all of these uh, so-called orca, so-called killer whales, really super smart dolphins um, who operate like family, were separated at birth, stolen from their family, and then raised up to be entertainment for people who wanted to go see wildlife under controlled situations. And I don't know what it was about watching that documentary, but I just identified with that big fish. And they showed that big fish turning on its trainer, biting the hand that fed it, but recognizing it's not the hand that feeds me. You can't steal me from my family and then say I did you a favor. That's colonial debt. So somehow Blackfish was an anti-colonial revolutionary who ended up trapped in his cage. And when they entered the cage, they expected civility out of this trapped fish. And Tillicum turned on him and would just drag him underwater. And again, though, they show you in that documentary that these whales have familiar relations, methods of communication. They recognize, you know, uh, uh, you know their surroundings. Recognize when they're being forcibly separated. They showed you when they're the the, the literally the the babies crying as their parents are being dragged away by these whaling ships. So, so you know, the content. I mean, it was to me very clear. The the, the connections were were very clear. Uh, and then when he went and started snatching them up, they said, "Up, oh, he's crazy, and we need to 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 look. Uh, uh, you know what what is?" And then they showed how it was his descendants, right? Because it was literally his children that genetically were, were were predisposed to do the same thing, and were snatching their their trainers or masters up. Uh, 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 and saying, you know, we don't accept this. And it forced, the, just like Nat Turner and, and those like him, it forced the state to rearrange its own rules. So, and I just want to say, the, yeah. these are things that another crazy group, crazy in quotes, called the MOVE organization, were protesting in the early 70s because their first big protests were protests around zoos. That's right. And by the way, please go to imixwhatilike.org and check those conversations we had with Dr. Burroughs and Lynn Washington about MOVE and the 40 Years of Prisoner documentary and all of that, and Mumia and all of that. So yeah, um, okay. Can I just uh, say something? I just want to confess something to y'all. Because we only have, we, we're, we're down to four minutes left on this category and we have to nom you know, lay out the, the nominees. Okay. But go ahead, yeah. I never watched Free Willy. <laughs> 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 Neither have I. I never watched it. Either. I don't think that little white dude was trying to really free really. Because <laughs> when they dropping bombs in the case, nobody go to the manta rays and be like free Willy. <laughs> well, first of all, I haven't seen any of them either. But but there are like three of them. So if there's like three or four three free Willies, it, su it suggests there ain't nobody trying to get free. Because if they free Willy, it's over. <laughs> Ain't no more Willie. <laughs> Willie. Willie went on to be free. <laughs> never <laughs> Willie. Was, like, democracy never in Africa. What, what was it? <laughs> democracy never in Africa. Never something like that. What was it? Yeah, I, I don't. Never know. free Willie. Okay, so the nominees: Corey Ali Muhammad. Now, who's Corey Ali Muhammad? Wait, before we say that, right? Let's just let's just name this next one, and then come right back. All right. The next one is um, the NFAC Grandmaster J or John Fitzgerald Johnson. That's right. So we only have two nominees this year for the Nat Turner Christopher Dorner Tillicum Award: Corey now, Ali Muhammad and John. Fitzgerald Johnson of NFAC. So Corey is somebody who said he was tired of racism and killed a white man and then was driving afterwards and found out that he was wanted 
And he said, in for a penny, in for a pound. Wow. Isn't that what that means? So he went out and yep. killed three more white men. Now, because he said he was going to get locked up anyway. He was going to get locked up, right? And somewhere along that line, I think he watched Free Willy and Blackfish in the same day, and it caused confusion. And he was like, I'm going with the documentary. So Corey Ali Muhammad got to be on this list. We've had other folks, uh, the brother who was working at the brewery before. That's and right. Was tired of dealing with all of the folks at the brewery who were racist and said, I'm going here. And called the police and said that. Yeah. With his so white just, girlfriend, by the way. Remember, he had a white girlfriend. And yeah. and 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 they went on the news. Her, she and his and his and, and her mother went on the news after they killed him, or he killed himself, and said, uh, you know, he was cool with us, so there must be something to why he was mad enough to start shooting these other white folks. So I mean, anyway. Now, I, I don't have much to say, um, but I know you did some great interviews with one of our favorites, Daruba Ben Waha, mm -hmm. around the NFAC, the John Fitzgerald Johnson, a.k.a. Grandmaster J. I've been looking for his mixtape. I couldn't find it. But what oh, did wow. you guys talk about with um, with Daruba and, and the NFAC? So quickly, uh, just because we're down to 30 seconds on this category, just keeping time, you know, obviously we can, you know, hate on the time, too, but just so we're aware that that uh, actually we did two interviews with conflicting views. So Daruba bin Wahad said, this dude is a clown, more or less. And people can go back and look at the interview uh, and, and clarify or check me if I'm misinterpreting it. But as I remember, he was saying, this dude is a clown. He's not to be taken seriously. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's likely a setup. He may be an agent. There was, you know, it's too suspicious. We shouldn't be paying this much attention to this guy saying, you know, he's going out here and he's going to, you know, uh, you, you know, arm self-defense white folks. The On the other side, we did an interview with the African Esquire, uh, Tierney Cherie, where she on her platform had talked about and she described with us how she talked about how we're being encouraged to look at him that way. And we should look at him at least a little bit more seriously before we have more information to say, why are we being encouraged to make fun of somebody who is saying, uh, as, as, as we sort of comedically talked about in terms of a long history of it said, we're going to arm self defend, uh, and protect our communities, which whether it's Robert Johnson or Malcolm X or, or others have shown has, a, 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 an, 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 an affirmative, influence on on generating peace so uh you know for me i would just you know say i don't have enough information i'd like to know more there seemed to be a good degree of organization with him and his crew in terms of how they approach publicly public use of 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 guns and the and the laws around guns and it seems odd that he was uh it seems set up saying that he was pointing a gun at a federal agent and that's why he was locked up when you know, so anyway, I, I, I would rather err. I hate to say that I, I, I don't want to disagree with Daruba, but I would rather err on the side of Tierney Cherie and say we should support in general the attitude among black communities being targeted, especially what happened last week in the Capitol and what's being predicted to come in, in this month of black communities organizing self-defense, uh, 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 you know, again, with training and the way they seem to be doing it with NFAC, at least uh, what little I know. Anyway, so that, that's that's probably the side I would err on for that. So it's a hard one to nominate. We got any, anybody in the chat putting other names up? Uh, let's see. Uh, we got some good jokes. Uh, there's some some comedic haters. There's a lot of comedy in there. In for a penny, in for a pound. Penny Marshall, Maurice Clemens. I'm not sure if I know who that is. Free Willy Bojangles Robinson. Wow. <laughs> um, uh, Got to give uh, the Dorner Award to the young folks in Minneapolis. They set off a nationwide rebellion. That's a good nominee. That's a good nomination. Uh, by the way, folks, you are, I see you talking about Black Thought and Jaguar Wright. Please stay tuned. 
that's all I, I just want to say. Hold hold on and please stay tuned. But that's all I see. I don't see any any other nominees in in the chat. Oh, Killer Mike. <laughs> I don't, I don't think. Wait a minute, that might be for something else. I don't. I don't know if that qualifies for this. I think they uh, clowned it. Yeah, they might be <laughs> clowning. Uh, uh, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. I think they're clowning. Uh, but here we have a vote for N fact, uh, and here someone is saying is is that they're sus. Uh, so I don't know. It, it, it does seem like it's a tough one. Uh, Killer Mike got to get one of these awards. We'll see. Stay tuned. We'll I'm, I'm going to punt and say the people in Minneapolis. Yeah, they got another vote. I might punt and jump on that one too. Uh, uh, I like I like Corey's rationale. But you, yeah, I. You know what? That that's a good point too. I like yeah, Corey's I'm, rationale. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm, I'll rock with that one for this for the for the for the for the tradition of the hate awards and the Chris Dorner award and the the you know, uh, uh, yeah. So let's yeah, I, I'll go in with that and we can go ahead and say that Corey Ali Muhammad, who may need uh, a, a secondary award for the William Kunstler Colin Ferguson Defense Award. We'll go ahead and nominate and go ahead and give him the 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 the. Uh, Nat, Dur Nat Turner, Christopher Dorner, Tillicum Award for 2020. And we hope that that uh, holds him over as uh, I know he's about to go through uh, one hellish ordeal. Uh, all right. So, so as we move forward here on the eighth annual 2020 and as horrible as super cross winter solstice it could get worse COVID pandemic white walker boku foku hubert henry harrison hate awards and we move on to a classic award over but the this years. is the award that the hate awards is known for well i would say there's another one that we're actually more known for but okay. this is certainly okay. Up this there. is number two. This is maybe number two. Number two, right, right behind it. The, the Catch a Predator Award. You want to, you want to do the nominees, and I'll start the clock. I will do the nominees. Jeffrey Epstein. Mm. Anybody want to say something before I move on? I mean, it was, it's been a big year. <laughs> the weird reveal. thing is, huh? <laughs> the weird thing about this. Is Jeffrey Epstein is one of these folks I actually wish was still alive. I wish they could have kept him alive. How about that? And, and go back to like when we began, he was the winner of the first award. And listen to what we were saying then. And you will find some eerie predictions about what actually happened with this. I mean, I will credit you for this, but but as a crew, we've had this this story from way before it became popular and way before mm -hmm. it even became comfortable to talk about even as a joke. So anyway, congratulations to us. All right, let's move on to the uh, next nominee. Because he uh, spawned, well, are we going to mention those he spawned, or were they just getting their own nominee? Oh no, I, I, I think I think um, I'm going to go nominee. by the list of nominees, and I mean we can always connect it up. I mean it's all connected, right? Right. So, yeah. The, go ahead. The, so the second one is okay, Prince Andrew, Bill Clinton, Alan Dershowitz. Mm. Part as, of the group. As, a, as a triumvirate. Right. <laughs> That's a big word. I could never pronounce that. A, a, a troika. There we oh, go, the, Troy. I think I can do Troy. The, yeah. the, the, the trio, the trio, trio. Any the comments? Threesome. The threesome oh. is quite correct. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And as we pause, Doctor Hate, anything on the uh, trio? Yes, the glass menage a trois. <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you know, you know, Trump. Trump told Hillary he was like. Your husband is disgusting, <laughs> and I know stuff about him that would make the whole world turn it on him. And when Trump said that, I was like, man, what did your husband do? And then you see Bill talking about, yeah, I was on the island. I was getting a massage because, you know, the, 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 the ride on the, the private jet was kind of rough. Yeah, I was up in Africa with them. You know, I was getting another massage. Be like, dude, you just heard this dude get convicted 
for getting massages by young girls who he was snatching up from the communities of Florida. And you over here talking about I was getting a massage. We know what you was talking about, Bill. We know why you call black people super predator, you projecting fool. To you quote was Dave the Chappelle, super predator. To quote Dave Chappelle, just yuck. Yuck. Go so ahead, keep going. Pearls. Uh, so nothing with Prince Andrew and Alan Dershowitz. We'll, we'll move on to the third. Well, I right? mean, I just think it's, you know, obviously there's there's no definitive proof on them. Dershowitz wait, is wait. countersuing and defending and whatever. But wait, it's just beautiful. Prince, Prince Andrew got a picture with him with one of the underage girls when she was underage. And I yep. think his logic was like, but she got older. Right. So she not she not 16 now. Right. That I mean, with of course. Your, with your, she's going to get older eventually. She was only 17, <laughs> but she was sexy. You can't use Rick James as a public defense, Prince. Prince wasn't even yeah. doing that, Prince wow. Edwards. So you can't you can't just be in the picture and be like, I have no recollection. But is that you with your arm around that prepubescent girl? Nasty? I have no recollection of that picture. But is that you though? <laughs> you don't need to recollect, bro. Is that you? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I believe that's, that's me. you. <laughs> Absolutely. They got a whole symphony of sinners. Y'all sinners. Nasty. Yuck. Okay. Um, number three. Is it is it just lean Maxwell? Is that uh, pronounced correctly? Probably not, but I just wanted to I just wanted to watch you mess it up just because <laughs> she don't deserve she don't deserve to have her name pronounced correctly. Giseline. <laughs> Gisline Maxwell. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be something like like I don't even know. Get Gisline, Gisline Maxwell, Je Epstein's fixer. Mm. Yeah. Gasoline. Because she gasoline. <laughs> she was gaslighting the claims of all of these young people. He never touched you. He only helped you. So now she's the next one. I'm like, look, you know all the secrets in this worldwide child stealing pedophile ring. Just release the tapes. That's all we're trying to find out. Just release the tapes. Because for some reason, right? Because for some reason, people need proof that those sons and daughters of empire are really pedophiles mm. and a sex traffickers as if everybody around the world who was snatched up and got their lineage inside connected to them you know when that 21 and me report came out it was like 70 percent of the folks in these in these dna databases showed that they were born through rape but like what do you think that was nasty bill in them prince edwards in them so yeah we we got a we gotta um we gotta get just lean gasoline to light them up. All right, four we got four minutes left and four more nominees to 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 run through. Let me read the last four and then you know we can we can cut loose here. Uh these are more um known ones. The Catholic Church, mm. the R. Kelly Woody Allen Lifetime Achievement to Catch a Predator Award. That's right. They deserve a lifetime achievement or, or 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 maybe they're being nominated for a lifetime achievement. Common. Oh. And Crazy Legs. And we just got a late addition from Super Anonymous Spousey who who who's who wanted to remind us, especially after that last uh uh whatchamacallit, uh uh what's my man's movie? Um uh uh what's his name? Uh Borat. Uh oh, Rudy Giuliani. Cohen. Cohen. So Dr. Cohen? Okay. But but no, but the Rudy Giuliani nom <laughs> should be getting given a nomination for that scene where he gets caught with who he with thinks his hands is an underage his girl with his hand down his pants, going to a hotel room to give a private, quiet interview with who he thought was a 15-year-old underage girl. Rudy Giuliani, America's lawyer, America's hero, America's hero. Uh, so uh, I want to give him that just for that. 
Now, somebody put in the chat, Africa Bambada, he was he was not nominated this year. He's a previous nominee, unfortunately, but but his allegations didn't come out in 2020. But that's why we have Crazy Legs as a nominee this year, uh, because the folks don't know the story or the allegations around uh, hip hop legend and break dancing legend Crazy Legs uh, uh, being, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, having a whole list, laundry list of accusations of sexual misconduct, and I believe even rape. Uh, but I would have to be checked on that. But but uh, but a number of things have come out suggesting, uh, you know, he's he's been messy at best. Uh, so I, I didn't see rape. I saw. That okay, thank you. Was, at least I, you may have seen different um, allegations, but I saw one that said he was sending pictures of his That's member. Right. That's right. right? He picks to, to multiple girls and women, and they claim some of them were underage. Um, and then, you know, he came out and made a statement that I've been suffering from depression and dealing with this in the wrong way. That's right. That's and then right. Rocksteady Crew, ro the mighty Rocksteady Crew, um, asked him to resign. And when he didn't, they resigned. So now let's just put this in context, right? They didn't try to cover the stuff up because they had just dealt with it in a number of different ways with Africa Bambata. But in the context of what the entire group that comes out with hip hop is facing, you know, they were, they were living in the Bronx during a tortured period. So to say that Crazy Legs needs therapy would be like one thing, but to say anybody who came out of that era and saw what they saw and dealt with what they dealt with, everybody gonna need some therapy. Right. Yeah. And that's not to excuse it to say that depression is a reason that he said, I don't necessarily say that. Um, I don't know if the allegations are true, but let's put it in scale with everything else. Right. Everybody will be up in arms about, you know, what legs is doing and or did um, and then why it came out at this time, because he's connected to the Olympic committee's placement of B-boy and b girling as now an Olympic sport. Some more Greek stolen legacy stuff, but um, legs, crazy legs was going to be a part of that, right? Um, and then crazy legs is also part of the Red Bull B Boy and B Girling competition. So there's a number of different places where, as the face of B Boy and B Girling, um, since you know B Boy and B Girling began in this country, um, he's connected to it, and folks are saying we need to remove you from these places where people who could be suffering your consequences will be vulnerable. I get that, agree with that. Somebody said, I can't give him no slack, got it. Let's get to some of these other folks though, right? So so just listen, by the way, time is up on this category. We're about 90 minutes in, we got several, I know we're gonna speed through, but we got many more to go. So uh, we might need to just, just, to, just to keep that in mind. Um, uh, but yeah, the, the what was the comment? Why is comment on here? I don't remember. No, I, I wanted to know that too. So when Jaguar Wright was doing her her live, oh, Jaguar Wright came out dropping bombs off folks. I right? forgot about that this part. That's and, right. And so Jaguar Wright was like, you know, they was on a tour bus together, and Jaguar Wright was describing what it was like to be a, a woman in hip hop and touring. And you know, made some incredibly profound, painful statements, revealed what she had been through, um, and you know, struck a chord with folks. And the, and one of the things she said was, you know, she went to sleep one night, and Common was there, and they was in different spaces, I guess, in the tour bus or on in the hotel. And she woke up, and Common had put his stuff in her face. He was like, I woke up and had stuff in my face. Right. So this is before social media. So instead of sending a D pick, he sent a real life <laughs> 3D no, no. in your face. No. He went analog old school with it, no. apparently. You could say that. <laughs> well, she said that. You could say that, right? So I now so conscious of hip hop. No. So now, you know, so obviously that came out. Um, and then she dropped other bombs. So I think somebody else was talking Black Thought, the Jaguar Wright piece. You know, and Jaguar Wright was hurt. And I think what inspired her to talk was the, the passing of Malik B 
from the roots, the roots two two man MC, right? And being like, you know, some of the other stuff she dropped was, was just heavy. Um and and discrediting, you know, the 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 attractiveness of um what's my man's name? Quest Love. And that joint was hilarious. Um and then you know, saying black thought should have done Malik B better. Um and, and they owe more the, credit the, to Malik B. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's what yeah. really got her out there was the Malik B death passing and, and then the people not, you know, put yeah. respect on his name. Yeah, she got it to live Quali too. She got, yeah, she, she, had, she, she, yeah. So anyway, so, so Epstein, Prince Andrew, Bill Clinton and Dershowitz as a, as a, as a troika, gasoline Maxwell the Catholic Church, who are perennial uh, nominees, and the R. Kelly, Woody Allen Lifetime Achievement Award, Common, and Crazy Legs. Um, I would go with Epstein. It's kind of obvious, but it's just too, too documented, too much, too painful. Well, I want to give him the award, particularly not only because he's earned it as a super predator, but but because of all that he is unearthing about the super predation of the, the, this broader international apparatus. So when you call your plane, you want to, you want to chime in for, when you, for call your plane, when you call your plane air fucking one, right? I mean, that's that, that <laughs> label, right? <laughs> right. So, so. So I'm um I'm I'm happy to see all of these folks fall. So I I gotta get right, it. Well, congratulations to them, to all of them, from Epstein to Andrew to Clinton to Dershowitz to Maxwell the Catholic Church, R. Kelly, Woody Allen. I'm gonna leave common and legs off that part. They ours. We could deal with them. They ours. The rest all of them right. folks, they gotta go. All right, so as we push ahead here uh, uh, on the eighth annual 2020 and Anna's Horribilis Supercross Winter Solstice, it could get worse. COVID pandemic, White Walker, Boku, Foku, Hubert Henry Harrison, Hate Awards, the eighth annual 2020 edition. We are moving forward to the next award. And I would suggest that I, I wasn't sure if this was one of the ones that we were going to move a little quickly through. We can but, go fast on this one. But I think there's a couple we should probably go a little bit fast on because there's a couple that are going to take a few minutes. Right. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, the Petty Murphy Award is uh, uh, TikTok playing Donald Trump. They are one of the nominees, which was which I thought was great. Uh, Michael Jordan for The Last Dance and Mackenzie Scott, the billionaire ex Amazon uh, ex wife of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, who was giving away four billion dollars, including one hundred million to HBCUs, including a big forty that she dropped on my own Morgan State University. So Mackenzie Scott, the Petty Murphy Award nominee, Michael Jordan for the Last Dance, TikTok for playing Donald Trump, and 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 Dr. Haight, would you want to explain what the Petty Murphy Award is or anything else about these nominees before we go ahead and jump out there and and nominate, and even why is Mackenzie Scott on this list? So I think um, Petty Petty Murphy is obviously like you know Black Petty is a thing, and um, it's a beautiful thing sometimes when you can sit back and watch the people that came at you. Uh, just like Eddie Murphy had to suffer Bill Cosby for so many decades as the, um, you know, Bill Cosby was once that clean America's favorite dad, com comedian um, who, you know, took every chance he got to malign black folks. Even in the middle of Hurricane Katrina, he was saying, God brought this wickedness on you because of the way that you live in. And it was just this wonderful moment of projection and being like, but Bill, you out here roofing all your Pill Cosby. Spanish fly. Tar Beach. You got the roofing all up in this joint, Bill. What's wrong with you? So when Eddie Murphy got back on Saturday Night Live because he wasn't messing with them anymore, and he was like, I never thought I would see myself on Saturday Night Live and Bill Cosby behind bars. It was, it was um just some classic hate, right? So from there, we just gave him, you know, he got to get his own title. Um but the TikTok playing Donald Trump. That was hilarious. And, and that, um, you know. 
And if folks that's, don't remember, that's when they played. They they made it seem like everybody was going to show up at one of his rallies, and nobody did. So these cats bought up all the tickets to his rallies, and he was like, "We got a million sold," and it was just a classic, classic play, um, classic trolling, right? And then Michael Jordan for the last dance, like Mike, Mike about as petty as they get. Mike wants that title as the goat. And when he sees LeBron getting close, he's like, let me just remind y'all. And to his credit, he gave us some great viewing um, of, you know, the, the dynasty that was Jordan and the Bulls. Um, and then he took shots at everybody he could take shots at. And he was like, I want the last say on editing. So he made himself look like, you know, innocent in some cases. Um, and in other cases, he's like, look, I wanted to win. I had to punch somebody in the mouth. Look, I didn't, I didn't like Isaiah. Isaiah dust, he dissed us. So we don't mess with him. You can't play on the team for the Olympics, right? So Jordan's um, Jordan's um, response in Last Dance and all of that stuff was hilarious. And then the biggest critique against Jordan was that you could have took out, who was it? Um, Strom Thurmond. Right, right. You could have right. unseated Strom Thurmond just by supporting, just by throwing your weight in the direction of these candidates, right? Of Harvey Dent, right. Right. So, and George's response was like, Republicans buy my sneakers too. And so, because LeBron is out here building schools, not with his own money, obviously, but building schools and taking the positions he's taken, George is like, I'm going to put up $100 million over the next 10 years of my money. Right. But it also came out that, that that shoe comment didn't happen though. You know, that wasn't that was wasn't true. Yeah, it, I don't know if it was this year or last, but it came out that that was mis that's been misreported from 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 for a long time and I wish I had the details in front of me. So that's really? why I thought that that part of what he was doing wow uh, that is Jordan was reminding everybody um that that or the context was misunderstood or there was cuz mm -hmm. I think there was something misreported about that. Hmm. But 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 that he was trying to clean that up as well, um, and and yep. and something to that effect. Um, now, in in terms of uh, Mackenzie Bezos, I mean, I have a special award for her that we'll talk about later. Um, you know, special vote for her. But but why is she on this list? Yeah, I don't know why she's on this one. Doctor oh. Hate her on this one. So when you take all of that wealth from the Amazon stocks. And then try to turn it against the tradition of just hoarding all of that money and then say, I'm going to give it all away. You literally took, um, she literally took what was looking like her husband was going to reach in this richest man in the universe status, the, the living Tony Stark, and let Elon Musk slip into that top position just because they divided up that Amazon money. Right. Mm. So I, I, I don't know. Obviously, she could be doing this out of the genuineness of her heart. But either she way, could. painful and worthy of a nomination. Right. Hell yeah. And it tells you and this goes back to your point with the myth of black bond power. The black folks ain't got no money. Every single HBCU was like, this is the most money we've received from a single donor in the history of our institution. Mm. Single handedly received the most gave up the most money to any one of these hbcus and it came unrestricted too so there were no strings attached either so by the way quickly shout out to miss cambridge uh blood honey and damien for becoming new members to the channel uh please folks can you know consider joining uh we got a lot of good stuff building on on, on the way on this platform so uh, uh we appreciate it and uh thank you for for joining um Speeding this up, I want to uh, vote for TikTok. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I want to vote for them too, just because, because, because not that I care so much about it's easy to hate on Trump, but not because of that, but because just because of the the brilliance of of and and the collective nature of the hate, it it it, it, it appeals to me that there was a collective uh, nature behind it, and um, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a nice hive mentality. Yeah, exactly. So, so congratulations to the TikTok crew for getting this year's Petty Murphy Award. Um, 
and we came in on that in under five minutes, so we saved a few minutes. Uh, uh, and as we move on to the next one, uh, the Refrigerator Perry, Refrigerator Perry Award, uh, um, right here on the, of course, 2008 annual 2020 and as horrible, horrible as super cross winter solstice, it could get worse. COVID pandemic, White Walker, Boku, Foku, Hubert Henry Harrison, Hate Awards. Uh, the next uh, up award is the Refrigerator Perry Award. And Dr. Hate, or, or go ahead, Dr. Burroughs. Well, yeah, I, 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 well my, my vote is already for the second nominee, and that's uh, Jared Ball. And I just wanted to do that quickly because that will give Dr. Hate more time to explain the first nominee and the nature of the award. So go right ahead. So Refrigerator Perry played uh, defensive line for the Chicago Bears in the National Football League in the, in the you know, early to mid 80s and they won a Super Bowl together but the real star of that team was Walter Payton Sweetness who's an incredible running back um, and the NFL you know would show all of his incredible highlight films of Walter doing work and was a hero to folks who grew up thinking about coming running backs and watching him play Walter was the favorite right um, and when it Bears were clearly going to win this Super Bowl on the one yard line. The coach, Mike Ditka, puts Refrigerator Perry, the defensive lineman in the backfield, as he was prone to do throughout the season. And rather than giving Walter Payton, who you could see in his highlights, skying over the offensive line to get the one yard touchdown to move the chains forward, move the chains forward. He put Refrigerator Perry in that backfield, gave him the ball, and he got the chance to score, taking the chance from Walter Payton to get his Super Bowl touchdown. That was one of the most hateful things I could have ever seen at the moment. I didn't even know when I was a young child watching up how hateful it was, but I remembered. I got to catalog this and come back to this. He was on that list when I was a young hater, all the people I wanted to come back. And Corey, I wanted to see Mike Dicker get his. And so this, this award is about not about Refrigerator Perry, because you was just a tool in the process. You're not hating on the fridge. But it was what, what shit the, Mike Dicker did to Walter Payton. He ain't even around anymore to be hating on him. So on behalf of Walter Payton, we hating on Mike Dicker with the Refrigerator Perry Award. And even with what, what's done with my own nomination, which we'll, I'll just talk about in a quick second, I like that that it, it, it's also the, the, the nomination of Mike Ditka is that is that it, it represents an ongoing repeated process or pattern of behavior mm. that needs to be checked. So the reason I'm nominated is, 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 is that there was, and we did, when I did the video, people can go check out on the origins of, of the uh, We Are Trained Marxist line from Patrice Cullors, the co-founder of Black Lives Matter, uh, which has gotten over the last year to a lot of attention from all over the place because people use it as, as saying Black Lives Matter is exposed as a Marxist organization and therefore can be hated on. The reason that uh, I, I explained the background of the interview because I was the one conducting the interview and why it came to be and why she said that. And then other people like this brother that I point out in the video with many more views and many more followers than I have uh, uh, talks about that interview as so many have done without mentioning that it was me. He in fact says some somebody, I don't know who this guy is, even though I'm easily identified, easily identifiable. Uh, and I identify myself as introducing the segment. Uh, he says I, he doesn't know who I am. So he can't even mention my name or to credit me with the interview. He's just saying this is the proof so he can go on and make his point and get his hundreds of thousands of views uh, and, and the revenue from it, obviously. So it's it's again kind of like uh, uh, me, in this sense, carrying the ball up to the one yard line in terms of the story of the we are trained Marxists. And then he gets it across the goal line and all the attention for for uh, uh, and credit for the critique uh, where he can again use this to to suppress algorithmically me and my channel and boost himself uh, uh, as well on YouTube. Now, that said, we are the only two nominees, but because of what I said in the beginning, I want to use my vote and having already won an award this year, I want to actually vote for Mike Ditka getting the award, not only because of what he did to a much greater figure in Walter Payton, but again, of what he uh, allows for uh, uh, and identifying a pattern 
that still goes on today of not giving credit at the one yard line for the people that got the ball there. So my nomination goes to Mike Dicker. Yeah, I got to go with that as well. I'm just letting Todd be on mute for a second, and I'm trying to right. sound like I'm pretending like I'm Todd until he hits that mute button. Perfect. That's hilarious. I'm, I'm sorry. And this just reminds me of, Jared, since we're talking about these kind of personal slights. It reminds me when I profiled Paul Coates for The Root, and Ta-Nehisi Coates said, oh, there's a great profile of my dad on The Root today. That's right. Or, or my other favorite one is when years ago I did an interview with Ishmael Reed where 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 he found when I was so happy that he found something I said quotable and worthy of of uh, you know involvement inclusion in his own work. But when he went to the New York Times, it 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 came out as I was talking to this guy at some radio station who had this really good point. And oh, then wow. <laughs> oh wow! I was like, or our favorite one though of course happened live on the vaunted WPFW in Washington DC when we had the when we formally were on the air there as I mix what I like and and uh, also on that that station is the the very popular uh, and, and in many ways, legendary sports journalist Dave Zirin in his show, where a caller called his show to say that, Dave, we like you, but your show is second favorite to us, to, 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 to I Mix What I Like. And Dave kept making reference to the show without referencing us. And then <laughs> since he had have actually had written a book about Muhammad Ali titled Say My Name, Fool, <laughs> I reached out to Dave and said, "Say my name, fool." And then he went on the he went I went on the air and went ahead and said, "Yeah, the show I'm talking about is Jared." So anyway, well, it, it, there's a lot of fun we've had with all of this. Well, uh, you you won't vote for yourself. You're voting for Dicker. I'm going to vote for you. <laughs> I'm voting for right. I'm voting for okay, fine. So I'm voting for Dicker. So Doctor Hate, you have the you have the the tie breaking vote. Uh, although I know others are in the. I think there's some folks in the chat voting. Uh, but you know, as we've said about the elections in this country, that vote might not mean anything anyway. So Dr. Haight, you want to tie yeah, break? I, I got to go with the coach because he represents the brand of Donald Sterling's that exists in all of these professional sports where all of these racist folks are aligned with these right wing white supremacist terrorists, and they all going to be called out in the next generation. They're oh, all going to be called out. You ain't going to see any more of these coaches going free. You're going to see people responding to them. And then the Kyrie Irving of the world aren't going to look as crazy. They're like, I ain't playing for you. All right. Well, very good. Congratulations. Folks can let folks uh, know that Mike, get the word to Mike that he's got this year's Refrigerator Perry, the inaugural Refrigerator Perry Award, uh, uh, which he has certainly earned uh since he created the context uh for the award in the first place so all right that's one we can do fast as well i think this one coming up we can do very fast all right so let's go ahead uh here as we move forward to uh the bamboozled frog scorpion awards uh, and, and folks, please, if one of you want to quickly lay out what, what it is that this, this means and, and who are the nominees, I will set the clock, even though I know we're planning to speed through this one a little bit. Well, I think, you know, Bamboozled is, is famous, you know, in the Spike Lee film. And then obviously from Malcolm X talking about how black folks get fooled. Right. And then the frog and the scorpion is just this allegory of what happens between the frog and the scorpion when the frog trusts the scorpion to take it across the lake. And this frog is like, you sure you ain't gonna sting me? And the scorpion's like, nah, man, I got you. And the frog's like, you sure? Because if you do, it's both of us, we gonna sink. Jumps on the scorpion's back, being ever so trusting, as frogs are. And the scorpio stings it, as scorpions do. And the frog is like, why you do that? The scorpion's like, scorpion, son, I'm supposed to sting you. So, the, the nominees for this award, the Bamboozled Frog Scorpion Awards, are Black people for supporting Biden and Harris, Bernie supporters for thinking he would keep that same, keep up that same energy, and AOC and the squad for thinking that they could take down or claiming that they could take down Pelosi and the DNC. This is an easy one, all three. Ooh, I like that. I'm with that. All of the above. 
all of the above. I agree. Yeah, you get all of folks was was bamboozled scorpions or bamboozled frogs, I should say. <laughs> or, or 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 yeah, some something in there. Uh, I mean, Bernie Bernie was that scorpion. Bernie was the scorpion. Pelosi like I, was the scorpion. Or 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 I might even think AOC and them were the scorpion in promising. No, because they were promising to be something else. So I can't call yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, well, congratulations to all of them. Uh, Wait, can for, I just make that clear for, for a second? The Democratic Party is the scorpion. The Democratic Party is the scorpion. So congratulations. The Democratic Party. That's right. That's right. All right. So so we're moving along here. I know we're going to have to take a few minutes on this next one, but we are just so folks are aware. Again, I mix what I like live. Welcome. If and, well, and thanks to all those who have been rocking with us this long, almost two hours to the eighth annual 2020 Anna's Horribilis Supercross Winter Solstice. It could get worse. COVID pandemic, White Walker, Boku, Foku, Hubert Henry Harrison hate awards with the next award coming up being... The Hate You Folazol Mammy Jolson Award. Good Lord. Uh, and I will set the clock on this one. Uh, I have to take a brief intermission. I will be right back, but I will be listening, and I know who I'm going to vote for. All right. So as, as Dr. Burroughs steps, steps out for a quick second, Dr. Hate, uh, you want to run down any of this, explain any of this, context any of this? So, obviously, we're making a, um, a rhyme play on words with the hate you, Dolezal. It's, um, you know, that special person, Rachel Dolezal, who for so long um, had folks fooled and thinking she was a black woman. And, you know, she was uh, out in Washington state and leading uh, the NAACP, which she didn't have to be a black woman to lead the NAACP. NAACP got white blood in it to begin with. But you get more credibility as a black woman. So she was like, I'm going to just be this black woman. I went to Howard University. I could you know, study African-American art. I could do this, right? So she was out there representing. And, um, you know, eventually uh, found out that folks found out. She was like, oh, you actually a white woman. You got a whole white family some adopted black siblings um, and you got black children now, right? So the Hate You Fold Is All Mammy Jolson Award. Um, I don't know if you want to take the Mammy Jolson piece, but we can get to the uh, first nominee. Just a reference to the whole, I mean, first of all, the Al Jolson piece uh, 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 of a white man and a Jew, which I think plays or is going to play a role in, in this piece. Uh, performing in blackface. Uh, um, in this sense, in this case, uh, all the nominees are women. So it seems, and in at least two instances are, uh, uh, at least that I'm aware of, are Jews. So for me, at least, I thought it was kind of funny to make a play on the Mammy Jolson part as well. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. If you wanted to... to, to sure. So the, the first nominee is Nkechi Amari Diallo. Second nominee is Jessica Krug, who is um, living as a few different people over time. Uh, the third one is Natasha Leisha Aura Bannon. And shout out to Rosa Clemente for, for putting me on to, to this particular person and the recent controversy she has sparked. Uh, now the fourth one is um, Hilaria Baldwin, which, you know, I think if, if folks paid attention at all to this, not that you should, um, was it's just comedy. It'd be like whiteness. You just get to be whoever you want, right? And then Kelly Keen Sharp, who was out there portraying like she was also a Latino, right? So now um, I'm gonna let the chat figure out who and catch Amari Diallo is because that joint alone is hilarious. Like if I see that name, I know somebody from West Africa and the Mandang Empire is coming, and that is not who you're gonna get. Um, so you can perform blackness in a bunch of different ways, change your name, uh, put some braids in your hair and assume the role. Right. And then Jessica Krug has this wonderful quote in this um, piece she wrote for Medium. 
where she said she had a lived experience as a white Jewish child in suburban Kansas City. And then she assumed the identity she had to claim, had no right to claim. Those identities included first North African blackness, then US rooted blackness, and then Caribbean rooted Bronx blackness. Now, blackness has a lot of different identities and she could you know, apparently approximate any one of those. Um, and the hilarity is when you write for Medium, we don't know if you got any peer reviewers. Mm. So now you publish this piece, you walking around with these identities and nobody peer reviewed your background. So when black folks get suspicious, it's a peer review process because we don't know if you play in the middle and medium or not. It's a very important process. Natasha Alicia Orobanan, she was um, uh, she was an attorney uh, for a Latino justice organization who then had to re resign after it was figured out that she weren't actually Latino. And then Hilaria Baldwin, Alec Baldwin's wife, was you know telling people that she was. Spanish, her family's from Spain, when really she spent some time in Spain. But folks who were calling her out were like, yo, we went to high school with you from Boston. You spent time in Spain and might have picked up the language, but you faking the accent and well, acting Spain like you is don't not know the Spanish is not Latin American. No. Uh, that's the colonizer. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, My vote is for Cruz because she got the most out of being black. Mm. Wow. Did she? Did she beat Nkichi Amari Diallo? <laughs> now, Jessica Krug was at a university and teaching in, in I guess, African-American studies, playing that role because her topic was about African folk, African history. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So did she beat out and catch you, Amari Diallo? I'm going to I'm going to let the chat vote on this one. Uh, I see a lot of votes for 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 Hilaria, hilarious. And, and I'm sorry, this is funny right here. Do you wish you had so many identities? That's funny. <laughs> and, and, and just for clarity, as the resident, you know, Jew who won the Jew that holds us all back hate award in the first inaugural <laughs> awards. You know, I, I just want to say I think that is perfectly funny. Uh, and yes, do you wish you had a lot of different identities? That is that that's a good one right there. That's very hateful. Uh, um, now, Rachel is not only black, she's African. That's right. I mean, she took it all the way back. So 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 it looks like somebody got it. It looks like it looks like it looks like a couple people are on it. Uh, and maybe is, is, is that suggesting she should get the, 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 the victory because she took it all the way back to the motherland? Uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, you go far back enough, ain't we all African? If you go back far enough, ain't we all African? That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's not true. I'm going to do, all... for me, I'm going to do the previous uh take the previous privilege dr burroughs took and i'm going to vote for all of the above uh i want to hate on all of these hate you folis alls and mammy jolson's uh and this whole idea that you know people can can sort of quote unquote pun intended pass in and out of these identities uh and make huge careers get grants get get become spokespeople and in listening to a recent uh um uh panel in which on which rosa clemente took was 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 uh you know a part uh there's a lot of what i would describe as confusion through the latin american community about the the value of some of these folks even after the fact where some are even saying even from puerto rico are saying that in the case of of this this bannon woman that because she's been on democracy now a number of times and has been, you know, uh, a, a good spokesperson for their issues, that it shouldn't matter. And I'm just like, you know, anyway. So go ahead, Dr. Burroughs. Go ahead. No, I just want to say I concur. So, well, that's it then. That's it. That's That's all of the above. Everybody's getting it. 
congratulations to all the hate you folazols and those like them who would uh you know i mean it doesn't take much if you want to truly respect a group of people you can work on their behalf without claiming to be them it's not that deep anyway let's move on to 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 what is uh, it seems like it's almost like a, a pun intended sister category the eleanor roosevelt white african goddess award now i need to explain that one please do there was a documentary that probably our audience is very familiar with a um, series that ran uh first in in new york as a series and then was made into a documentary that aired in new york and nationally and that's called The Hate That Hate Produced. And The Hate That Hate Produced was hosted by Mike Wallace. And you can see, of course, clips of, of this on YouTube. Um, Mike Wallace and I'm trying to remember the brother. I can't believe I can't remember the brother's name who came to Mike Wallace with this. Um, who wrote To Kill a Black Man? I'm, I'm, I'm blanking. I'm sure Dr. Hate will remember. Um he he went around with the, the brother went around with the white film crew and did interviews with all of these you know black nationalists and and other activists one of the things that they showed was there was a tape of the actual sidewalk speakers the the sidewalk orators and john davis uh, who was known as on the street and to this kind of oratory community as pork chop davis was uh filmed calling Eleanor Roosevelt, now Eleanor Roosevelt, the great um, human rights leader in terms of the United Nations and the Charter for Human Rights and the great civil rights leader, pushing her husband to try to do the right thing. And, you know, black people worshiped Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, you know, back in the day when, you know, when black people had very few white champions and very few white powerful champions. Well, Porkchop Davis called her, you, you know, in public, in this street corner orator, the great white African goddess. And so I thought that we would uh, have a category called that because I think we now have some new <laughs> people who are vying for that throne. Uh, if you don't mind me calling it a throne because it, it is one when they do it. That's hateful. That's hateful. That's, That's mighty hateful. hateful. Um, and and Lou Lomax was the person I was trying to remember, who was the, the black journalist that was with Mike Wallace. Lou Lomax, right? Tom, who, uh, a, a classic uh, uh, um, who died in connection to the whole Malcolm X uncovering the assassination plot as well. Wrote a book on Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and the assassinations, and mysteriously died. Right? Mysteriously, mysteriously died. died. That's right. right. Mysteriously died right after. Yes. That's right. Um, uh, okay. So, did we go through the nominees yet? No. For the, for the, the first African nominee is Mackenzie Scott. She's back again. That's my vote. The Already. Yep. And these folks, just to put this back in context. There's a bunch of billionaires, like mega billionaires, as if you need to say mega billionaires, right? Who have challenged each other to give away most of their money. And so she's giving away $6 billion. She's given away $6 billion over the last like two years, I guess, right? Probably over the last year, really, like beginning in the summertime. But, um, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars are going to HBCUs. And so you just see her as this person who is lauded as the great white African goddess. The second one, um, Jared, I'm going to let you take this one. This one your, um... <laughs> All right, that's right. The second one is 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 Kamala Harris. Uh is 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 nominated and and I, you know, uh, which I just think is funny. Uh and and after her is Queen Elizabeth, and after her is Lady Lugard, who, if folks don't know, was the legendary colonial administrator or wife of the colonial administrator of uh, Lord Lugard and the 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 British administrator and, and colonial developer of Nigeria. And then the last nominee for the Eleanor Roosevelt White African Goddess Award, and she could maybe be getting nominated. Is this a lifetime achievement? Maybe. Is is Oprah Winfrey herself? 
<laughs> she is the god of white women's tears. And I always well, Bell Hooks was... said Bell Hooks said famously in Vibe magazine in the late 90s to I think Kevin Powell interviewed her. She said that, quote, Oprah Winfrey sucks the dick of white culture. Ooh. I do remember that. Now, in a in a in a in a less, I guess, caustic version, one of my favorites is, is an essay in that book you put me on two years ago, Dr. Burroughs, that uh, uh, Kevin Powell edited, um, Step Into Our World, the anthology, in which Daphne Reed has a piece about Oprah yes. Book Club, which is, yes. I think, still an essential read, yes. where she talks about that if it were not for uh, Oprah and her affinity to rich, uh, make, appealing to rich white women, uh, uh, that even Toni Morrison would not have had the career that she has had. And that- No, Toni Morrison admits that, that, that Oprah put her on the map. And so we know from that piece, you're absolutely correct. How it's not that she put her on the map, but that she put her on the map in the mind's eye specifically of rich white women who are right. have always been Oprah's target audience, which I, right. I just thought was such a powerful point. Absolutely. So uh, uh, you're voting for Mackenzie, Kamala Harris, Queen Elizabeth, Lady Lugard, and Oprah, who I would assume should be up there for a lifetime achievement. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Hayes, who are you voting for? Man, this is a tough one. This is a tough Oprah's one. Oprah's getting I, a lot. I see. Uh, I see. Cop <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mandy so, Okra. <laughs> Kamala, Kamala Harris is like that piece where she um was was working with the truancy laws that if children were truant for too many days that the parents could be arrested. That's like a white woman's dream to get these black children up out of school. This is this is a tough one. These folks need to be on teams. <laughs> Chameleon Harris and, and, and Ava Oprah. I like that. That's that's a good point. Uh, and then uh, I think I gotta go with um, oh, Liz. Man, I think I gotta go with Liz because um, she be sitting on the royal jewels of of all the African people and and the colonies that Britain held and holds. She's sitting on the the stolen wealth, right? So we got missing um, persons account for the Benin bronzes that are like part and parcel of the, the, the British royal processes theft. So it's um, Lady Lugard, you know, Flora Lugard, she'd be there with her quote about uh, the sun never set on a British empire. She, There's a couple of heavyweight hitters in here. But uh, I think I got to go with Elizabeth. And you know what? I think it, just so we have a clear winner, I'm going to vote for Queen Elizabeth too because in and what's going to put it over for me is the the Netflix series The Crown that has become one of the more popular series which in many ways makes The Crown look better than even it should even with all the controversies that they they do deal with uh The Crown and the Queen in particular are made to look better than they should. Uh, I reject that just on GP. So uh, congratulations to Queen Elizabeth. Uh, please let her and her uh, her black uh, uh, daughter-in-law or granddaughter-in-law know uh, that she has been given this year's Hubert Henry Harrison Hate Award for the Eleanor Roosevelt White African Goddess Award. So. Uh, congratulations. She can add that to her long list of titles and uh, achievements. So now this one for me is, is our signature award. This next one, as we move forward here on the eighth annual 2020 and as horrible as super cross winter solstice, it could get worse. COVID pandemic, White Walker, Boku, Foku, Hubert Henry Harrison hate awards. Uh, we've bro sort of broken up this signature award into two segments. Uh, the first one, of course, being the Rick James F. Your Colonial Cold War Colonizer Award, uh, of course, going back. Do we have time to play any clips, fellas? How do we feel about this? To, to set up the history, should we just quickly describe the history of this award? How do you, how do you think? And thanks to JD for becoming a new member of the channel. 
Uh, I think you got to play the clip. Let's play the clip. Uh, let's take it to the clip to set up. Where we get this. All right. So my bad, everybody. That I, I, I thought I had a better version of the clip I wanted us to play. That was not qu quite the right clip, but I think it, it, it sets it up nicely. Anyway, obviously, we're talking about the F Your Couch uh, 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 Award uh, or the F your, F your Couch incident that, that comes up later in that whole exchange. But at least it sets up whoops, it sets up enough of the context uh uh you know for 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 the 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 uh double split at rick rick, rick james f your colonial cold war colonizer award and then <clears throat> the f your couch award which will come up uh in just a minute so uh who any either one of you want to take over the 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 nominees for this or let's let's just lay them all out um so we got individuals and then the, the countries they represent. But uh, Boris Johnson, Emmanuel Macron, Vladimir Putin, China, Israel, and United Arab Emirates. In this particular case, I think all of the above would be um, getting them off the hook. I'm going to go with Boris on this one. Now, Boris, by the way, he's tough. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to lay out why they're nominated. So you have, you know, because Boris Johnson is there for uh, to apologizing for for you, so, for not apologizing for continuing he, to colonize Africa. He's, he apologized for not continuing to colonize <laughs> Africa. Right. <laughs> right. That joint is like you right. double down on it. Like we should still be in power there. So mm -hmm. his F your couch is like, yeah, we, we walked away, but yeah, we should have stayed there, right? Stay there, yeah. Emmanuel Macron. Now we know the the um the central franc, uh the safe has been the currency of choice. Uh, a force for about 14 African countries in West Africa and some in Central. And it is a currency established by France in which 50% of the wealth, 50% uh, of the yeah, wealth of the country in currency needed to reside in France. And so Macron has said, we are going to make up for this colonial eco past um, and we will establish the eco instead of the CEFA. And now France no longer holds 50% of the currency wealth of these countries and is no longer the so-called basis and standard setter for what the currency is worth. So as the former colonizer, France would actually just set what value they thought the currency in these Western Central African countries is worth. But the madness of that is you're still involved with the currencies at all. Mm. And we know France, once they said we're going to decolonize, they took everything they had with them out of these countries and then said, we will just let you all starve. Including the light bulbs. Including the light bulbs, right? While they're claiming their wealth from these Western Central African countries. Continue to claiming the wealth, right? So that's Macron in France. And then Vladimir Putin is a, is a strange position here. Um, and it's going to be some propaganda from the West and America saying that Putin is uh, reported to tell to tell people that that Africa has enough land based and um, arable land to feed Europe. So the landmass Africa could free could feed Europe and free them of uh, food insecurity. And the only thing standing in their way is the African leaders. But Africa and Russia have this strange history um, by proxy of Cuba, where Cuba takes it upon itself to take all of the weapons and military machinery to Africa and fight anti-colonial wars, where Russia wouldn't step in, but play that Cold War role 
against the United States and any other power. So now Putin is actually stepping in and putting some of these military fighter planes inside South Africa. So, so you have it in our notes, you, you call it Kremlin comm. So you, you, you pointed out that, that, that although AFRICOM doesn't get enough attention, it gets more attention in terms of what the United States is doing in setting up military control over African uh, you know, sovereignty in militaries. It, it, it's, it's getting too much of the attention uh, compared to what, what uh, Russia's doing, China's doing, Israel is doing, and the, 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 even the UAE, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So now UAE is when, when Sunnis folks were revolting, um, United Arab Emirates was like, listen, we will just give you billions of dollars. We will flood your country with money. Just stop protesting. And to their credit, the Sudanese folks was like, nah, keep your money. We want to govern accordingly. We want our sovereignty. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so UAE and the Middle Eastern countries, the so-called Middle Eastern countries have always been in this battle um, surrounding Israel and then their connections to the so-called North African countries has really been what Israel has been trying to fight against and encroach upon African territory to gain foothold so that they can disrupt the Middle East presence in Africa, right? And so now Israel has its own hands in getting Sudan off the terror list um, in their relationship with Sudan now. So Israel is there, but you can see Israel has been there um, since at least the 60s. It couldn't go much past the 40s because it wasn't there before that. So by the 60s, Israel is helping South Sudan in their um, plight against Northern Sudan's terroristic treatment of its own country and the peoples in South Sudan. So some complicated relationships there, but we got to recognize any time that you have intelligence networks set up in your country, you have the beginnings of a colonial process. Anytime you got military, you have the full scale military colonial process. And then when you got the currency, you have the full scale neo-colonial process. It really don't matter who you got in presidency. Once they control your currency, it's a neo-colonial process, right? So we got Sinocom, Kremlin Com. You got NATO with French and all they've done in Western Africa. Of course, they took out Gaddafi with through NATO. And then you got the um the UK com. And then you got Israel here helping to 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 delegitimize its own Arab enemies in the so-called Middle East. And that's why they're they're enlisted. Uh um and now this is what Dr. John Henry Clark said about Africa. Africa has no friends. This is what the Afro pessimists are saying. You don't have any allies coming to save you. Mm -hmm. So then the question is which way for the Africans but inward and rejecting all of this outside allyship and help. And to be fair, well, uh, who was I just watching where somebody said, when you start with to be fair, it, it means you're about to say some nonsense. Uh, which I reject, although I think the line was funny. But but what I was going to say is that 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 even when a non-African ally or attempts to be an ally in the context in this situation, uh, Gaddafi, uh, others prevent that. The, the 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 attempt at being an ally, a non-African ally, is itself aggressed upon violently. Uh, you know, so so you know, um, you know, even when there might be some of that sentiment within whatever group, it's not supported, and and then is violently in this case uh, crushed. Um. Uh. Anyway, so so Boris Johnson, Emmanuel Macron, Vladimir Putin, Sinecom, uh, the Chinese interference in African politics, Israel for helping Africa to de- delegitimize its own Arab enemies and uh, the UAE for its relationship to Libya or lack thereof and Sudan and the pay not to play, that is to pay them not to, 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 to play. So, uh, um, and then obviously Africa. And then right? Africa itself, correct. Yeah. So 
I don't know. I just I'm just going to because we've hated on Africom not enough, but I'm going to go ahead and pick uh, Boris Johnson because not only did he uh, apologize for not continuing to colonize Africa, but he even contracted and then survived the coronavirus. So he, he <laughs> you know, uh, you know, like he is, you know, I mean. A hater par excellence, and then I also want to just add on to this that that even as he's supposed to be the the British equivalent to Donald Trump, he is not able to to out hate the strength of their you know social uh, apparatus that that he has to give what was it eight hundred what was it eight hundred or two thousand dollars a month or something like he has, anyway he has to extend the coverage of people. Uh, uh, you know, suffering through this crisis in ways that this country doesn't do here. So my vote is for Boris Johnson, even though we have a, a, a whole list of worthy nominees. They're all very worthy, but that that's why I stuck with with Boris. I mean, when you when you literally say, you know, we should have continued to uh, colonize the continent. I mean, that's that's such wonderful honesty. And Boris got a number of nominees in the audience and the in the crowd. So so uh can, can uh, I just add something here? Cause it, of the course. Sinocom, the Sinocom might not come come clear, but China is building a lot of the infrastructural um, institutions in Africa. And you know, having built the their uh headquarters for the African Union, the people that worked there noticed this strange phenomenon where there was a lot of data activity on the computer networks in the middle of the night, only to find out that China in building their computer networks had systematically sent all of the data that was filed in these protected secure networks back to China so they could spy on what everybody else was doing. But some folks will think this colonial debt's worth it. Well, when China, maybe it, it, they got to work harder to get my vote next year, though. So if, if they apologize for not increasing their colonization of Africa uh, uh, next, d during 2021, they can get my nomination for, for, for this award next year. But, but uh, since I, Dr. Burroughs, have gone in and cast our votes for Boris, Boris Johnson, congratulations. You get the Rick James F. Your Colonial Cold War Colonizer Award for this year's 2020 Hubert Henry Harrison Hate Awards. Congratulations to you. Uh, uh, and, and, and we wish you uh, another hateful year uh, going forward. Um, again, as we do press forward and round up, we're, we're, we're coming, we, we have two more quick categories that I think we're gonna rush through very, very br briefly. And then we're gonna yeah, get- real quick. We're going to get to the culmination, the 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 thing that everyone has been waiting so patiently for all morning and all year, the Hubert Henry Harrison Hater of the Year Award, and it it, it it's it's going to be a, a delightful, a, a delicious competition. So, uh, uh, as we do move move into this next category very quickly, the second half of the Rick James F Your Couch Award, we have two nominees, uh, Dr. Burroughs. I'll leave I'll leave I'll leave this to you. Thank you, Dr. Ball. And the two category, I'm sorry, two nominees are very simple. Oh, see, you're doing that talking talk mess pronunciation. Okay, that's fine. That's good. That's good. You got me. Well, let's see. I'll call her <laughs> Mercera Bardanian. That's really wrong. There's no way, there's no way that could be right. Even in a multiverse, there's no way that could be right. No. no, it's not. It's it's Marissa Baradaran. Yes. The author, the author of The Color of Money. Yes. Just very quickly, she's nominated this year because we worked, she was so supportive of my buying power work and you know, participated in the book, you know, the 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 the, the book launch and, and has so many nice things to say. And I leaned on her work so heavily <clears throat> in my own and you know, we we you know jokingly talked about trying to challenge uh, Killer Mike's misrepresentation of the whole black banking thing. But then, as someone had to point out to me at the end of the year on Facebook, she did her end of the year you know a book list of the books in 2020 that that moved her that that she liked, 
and she didn't mention mine. So someone tagged her and said, what about Jared's book? And she responded, you know, nice and said, you know, oh, it was fine. It was, you know, it was good. It was so good. It was so good is what she said. So I just thought it was a funny, you know, uh, Maris has been very cool, very supportive, but it seemed like a very worthy Rick James nominee moment for her, for her to uh, create her end of the year book list of books that moved her or were worthy of, of, of attention and to not even list mine in, in among the many. I mean, it wasn't like she just had two or three. She had like a whole list in different categories of, of genres. So it would have been very easy to slide me up in there, but, but she didn't. And I just thought it was very hateful and funny that someone in her comments brought my name up and, and alerted me to that. And so that's why she's nominated uh, uh, for this one. Uh, and then her co I love, how, I love how you're invisible even to the visible. It, it's like your episode of Star Trek, right? You know, where they, they have an accident and like and like they exist on another frequency and they're trying to say, like, hey, 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 you know, and then they're trying. I mean, I don't I don't know what it is, but I mean you show up and people see you, but then you just kind of fade away. Like, what happened to Jared? What well, fade away? Anyway, I thought it was a it was a funny moment, and, and again, worthy of the nominee. Uh, uh, go ahead with the, with the other nominee. For you. Well, the second category, a second nominee is very easy. It's uh, AOC and the Squad for all running on and going back on their word to force a vote for Medicare for all uh, to get rid of Pelosi. Now, I would add a third category because or nominee, I, yeah, third nominee, because I kept waiting in vain for uh, Bernie Sanders because he kept saying, "I'm going to stop." the Congress from running and to get a filibuster, you know, do a filibuster and stop the Congress from running until we get this other check. And, you know, I got all excited. I said, okay, Bernie's going to stand up for us. And he's going to, he's going to stand up against the Congress. And I waited and I waited and, you know, I, I saw Linus with me and we started talking about the great pumpkin and, you know, it was a really sad situation. So like, I'm going to, I'm going to put Bernie as the third nominee and I'm going to vote for Bernie. I, so, so Bernie, AOC, and Marissa Baradaran. I, I am actually going to go. You're picking Bernie. I'm going to go with AOC and the squad because Bernie had already punked out earlier this year when he capitulated during the the primary. So Bernie, although I never, you know, I always thought he had exposed himself and and thought pun intended. Pause. That that and 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 you know, going back to the late, great Bruce Dixon, that he was sheep herding for the Democrats. I I never was, you know, but but not that I was with AOC and the squad either, but they presented themselves from the beginning as being something new, something fresh, something feminine, something colorful, something international, something radical, something young. We're going to challenge Pelosi. We're getting Medicare for all. And and they punked out heavily. I love the squad, but I think your your criticism is absolutely correct and needs to be said. So, so my vote is is for AOC and the squad and, and Dr. Hate. You you get the 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 the, uh, the vote. Although we have we got the Bernie AOC competition in the chat is pretty heated. Uh, but Dr. Hate, you 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 got the last one on this one. She ran a platform on I'm going to force the vote. And get Medicare for all in the middle of the pandemic is pretty simple. I it's to. pretty simple. And keep in mind, we're talking about taking on an 80-year-old white woman, 100 millionaire. Just on GP, you should be going against that. And by the way, I think, and I think she had lower approval ratings than even Trump. Like, nobody likes Pelosi. So... And I don't want to hear that stuff about, you know, she's she only going to be there until she's 82 and then she's leaving. Because y'all did the same thing with RBG, who stole the initials from Red, Black, and Green. And now everybody walking with these RBG shirts. And I'm confused. No, I, I, I'm not confused. They got the wrong joint. And I'm with Mac on this one, making fun of the fact that she said, "You so what if you're a one-term congressman? AOC. I mean, I mean it's very that. clear that the Democratic Party is the number one establishment uh, that is not right wing that stops social change in America. And the fact that Pelosi and Clyburn and these folks, they know how to talk. I mean, Clyburn was with our black journalist group a couple of weeks ago. He knew exactly what to say. If, if I wasn't so clear on him, I would have been completely swayed. 
because you know he's a SNCC veteran, so you know you can't out radical a SNCC veteran. You know, so these people know exactly what to say, and they sound good. But then when you ask them for something, they start talking about people in the Midwest and Reagan Democrats and all these other people, and so they just stop social change. And they and and it takes a while to really realize that oh, they're they're designed to do that. They're created to do that. So Nancy Pelosi. And and Schumer and because you know AOC is trying to kick Schumer out, trying to get Schumer out and becoming the senator, and Clyburn, they have a lot of power because people need them to have a lot of power to stop a real left movement from coming. So they do have a lot of power and they do use it. All right. Well, so uh put the word out, let everybody know, everybody. Congratulations to AOC and the squad. They get this year's Rick James F your couch award. Uh, you know, it's well earned and well deserved, and and congratulations. Um, yeah, so so put the word out. And look, as we get ready to conclude here, we got one more quick category, and then we're gonna get to the to the to the the, the vaunted eighth annual 2020 and as horrible as super cross winter solstice, it could get worse. COVID pandemic, White Walker, Boku, Foku, Hubert, Henry Harrison, hater of the year nominees but we have a quick uh, a quick late entry for an old but classic category that we had to quickly throw together and bring back uh that i didn't even have uh uh uh, a a a banner ready for but it it is the no intel or was originally the no intel bro award um uh i think we renamed it slightly i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and get this one up for now, the No Intel Bro Award or the Co Intel Bro Award uh, for um, Co Intel Bro Award because uh, of a story that that technically should probably go into next year, but just to, for the next award. But just because it it reflect it, it started last year. Uh, this guy started last year. He's the single uh, 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 nominee for this this year's award um, because uh, and shout out to to the Gray Zone uh, for for this reporting where they break down all of the the, the video and all of this. This guy here, um, uh, who claimed initially came on the scene in this past summer in D.C. Uh, 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 Jaden X or Jonathan Sullivan claiming to be a black, you know, Black Lives Matter activist uh, ends up becoming the main one participating in last week's Capitol invasion, doing getting all of this documentary, get, documenting all this footage, including the the footage of the woman getting shot. He's seen on camera instigating burning down the Capitol and doing all this stuff. And the reason I think this is no intel bro, co intel bro worthy is because his presence is now being used to blame Black Lives Matter, which is something we can come back maybe and talk about later, uh, and Antifa for uh, uh, the 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 uh, uh, fracas down at the the Capitol the other day. So he is our singular and 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 only nominee this year. Uh, I encourage people to go see this Gray Zone report and to see Max Blumenthal's interview with Katie Halper, even where they get into this and break down the footage. I mean, it's a, it's a fascinating and crazy story. And this guy uh, is, to me, indicative of why we need real political organization and clarity, because uh, 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 this event planning and social media activism is leaves all the room in the world for people like this to do their no intel bro co intel bro stuff so congratulations uh if if, brothers if you have anything you want to add to that but congratulations to Jaden x or jonathan sullivan for winning this year's no intel bro hate award i don't that was well uh said uh dr ball thank you very much okay all right well very good so then so then as we go to the to the concluding uh signature hater of the year award does any do either of you want to take the liberty of reading our nominees i will do so i will do so (laughs) go ahead please Hubert henry harrison hater of the year award and the nominees are 
Uh, the first one is is me, which is is interesting because I, I tend to write about puppies and rainbows and, and, and Smurfs. But for some reason, I'm on here saying that I made a challenge to Black nationalists to write more than one book and that I have that I write, quote, merciless book reviews, end quote. They're very interesting. Very interesting. I mean, it's a, we got to point out. I mean, you spent, uh, you did a lot of zooming and, and whatever this summer, <laughs> and you've been on this point for years. To, to you know, to be clear, but but you went hard in their face to many elders and writers and people who should have been, as you argue, done more and written more. Your book reviews have been very clear on this point. Uh, I think this is a very well earned nomination. You have hated very hard this year on, <laughs> on you know, a good number of people uh, and importantly pointing out that, that we're not producing enough serious substantive work. Now, so. for those, for those who, who basically don't know who I am, if you go to imixwhatilike.org um, and you type in my name and you type in book reviews, you'll see many of the examples which uh, Dr. Ball and Dr. Hate feel that I am deserving of this award. Notice I'm not turning down the award. And notice I am not disagreeing with their analysis. I, I want you to, to notice that. Um, so, all right. So I'm the first person. Yeah. We yeah. don't have the tapes laid out, Leah, but, but yeah, I, yeah, you saw it live. So you know, what's up, you know, he's, he's worthy. <laughs> yeah, he cannot, the, the scene now, was ugly. Now the, uh, the second, the second. Hey, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Is hate trying to contextualize? Yeah. The, the scene, the scene. If folks have seen Todd at work, it's um he's mean. Todd is very mean and hateful. <laughs> Don't let none of this stuff fool you. Um, he was on with folks who were who were the old guard Malcolm X commemoration committee of the '90s, and was going at them on their platform with their event for not doing more than writing one book related to defending, lifting up, supporting, commemorating Malcolm X. And it was one of the most painful things to watch. Like I thought watching um, T'Challa talk to his ancestors in the not unknown, I thought that was painful. Like, bro, who are you talking to like that? You wildin'. And then when I saw this joint, I was like, this guy take this Black Panther thing real serious. <laughs> Before you die, I want you to hear what I'm saying to you. So when you were ancestor, you could know what I said about you. That joint was hard. Absolutely. Absolutely. The second nominee, I'm going to let uh, Dr. Hate do, because he, he's got to put in context. Well, I might have so, to. Go ahead, yeah. I, I, there's um there's a rule in battle rap that if you are facing one um heavyweight opponent that you just take one battle for that month right and it was a strange phenomenon because as we mentioned before there was um it was a, a a battle that was supposed to take place between Umar Johnson and Jared Ball in Philly. And I was looking at this like a battle rap enthusiast, like, oh, you going into his hometown with his crowd and you going to take on Umar Johnson for this battle, right? And this was all supposed to take place in October and like all within one week. And I was like, bro, you sure you want to go see Umar Philly? And he was like, yeah, let's set it up. So he jumps on the road and then I let him explain what happened. And then... The back and forth with the Twitter beef amongst you black academics is hilarious. Y'all, y'all just be taking everything real serious. And it's gonna be who gets the right and last word. And so if anyone followed for like, you know, a Twitter second, if you measure that in nano or like, you know, in, in whatever infinitesimal seconds that it lasts, there was a quick Twitter back and forth with Greg Carr the former chair of Africana Studies, African-American Studies at Howard University, and Jared Ball. And they went back and forth so much that Greg Carr was like, man, I'm coming on your show on the BTAC Collective. I'm going to write my piece, and I'm going to come display why my reasoning is the sharpest. And I'll let Dr. October, or oh, Dr. <laughs> October is going to come out 
You know, we spell October A K H because Ak over here, Aki over here, try to line it all up in October. It was like everybody can get it in one week, uh, let alone the Hamilton interview you had, right? So all of this is lining up for one short period of time. And I was like, yo, as a battle man, hype crew, son, you sure you want to go battle all of these folks in one week? You, you messing with car? Car? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> Mark? Umar and Carr. In one week, you trying to battle, son. That's a lot of heavyweights to take on. And so I'll let Dr. Ball say what had happened afterwards. So look, look, just some, some this is all very funny and, and I appreciate it. And I'm happy to be nominated. I do work very hard to 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 even though I'm part of the committee, I, I work very hard each year to, to earn my nomination. And I and I don't always make it. So I'm very honored to be nominated. Um first of all, the Derek Hamilton conversation we had earlier this year that was not part of this it, it, you know uh, uh hamilton has been a big supporter and of, of me and my work and he was doing us the graciousness of of coming to 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 talk with me and morgan state about that work uh but it was a heavy hitter i was engaging so i appreciate you know i get i get your point but but what was supposed to happen it, it just it happened to be in the month of october last year when um dr kemet shockley who's putting it put together a series of discussions with various people about various aspects of the African world has a series coming out, which I'm assuming is coming out in the next couple of weeks, uh, invited me, asked me if I would be willing. Initially he did ask me if I'd be willing to debate Umar Johnson. And, um, uh, for a number of reasons, I said I would, um, and it, it wasn't necessarily going to be couched as a debate. It, it was going to be more of a conversation where there was expectations that we would end up disagreeing. So there would be some whatever. I did agree to do it uh, and waited many weeks. And then the night before I got a text from Dr. Shockley that they were going to have to replace uh, Professor Johnson with somebody else because Professor Johnson had a last minute something happened that was never explained. Uh, and he never made it. I went up there anyway. We taped something with with Brother Omawale Africa, and we'll see what happens when it comes out. But that was that. The other one was so, I, and I don't even want to couch, even though that that Umar and I have been in similar spaces before. We we presented at the same space before. We've never really interacted. We certainly didn't have any beef. Uh, although there would be points of disagreement, I'm sure. But I was certainly willing, you know, to to you know discuss debate. Uh, with him or 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 certainly anyone else, uh, uh, especially if, if it's a serious invitation and people really want to have a discussion. The other one was with with Dr. Carr, who, you know, long story short, we go way back. Uh, he's in the chat now. Uh, and we were disagreeing online on Twitter about the vote and voting for Biden. Uh, and long again, long story short, his argument in defense of supporting Biden for federal judges and 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 this this sort of long, this sort of old argument, I disagree with thoroughly. But more importantly, I thought that his approach online with me and other people was condescending and disrespectful and disrespectful of the traditions we were working from. So it was as if Dr. Carr was not even willing to acknowledge that there are traditions, which I know he knows very well, in Black, black struggle of, of people saying we're not voting for these two parties. And then to reduce the entire discussion to federal judges uh, and then even at one point to argue that political prisoners would probably prefer that when when there's not one that I'm aware of who has made that argument and certainly when Daruba came on with us shortly after that he didn't accept that that line of reasoning um but I just thought it was a, it was it was a um an, a confusing and unsupportable position that should have gotten more honest discussion particularly with somebody like me, who with whom he has been engaged and known for a number of years, uh, and then we did invite him uh, to participate. Apparently, he said he would in our in our BTAC collective uh, panel on this, and then he didn't. Uh, um, and I would add one other piece to this: that that when uh, the Buying Power book came out, and through his support, I understand I ended up on Karen Hunter's show. She had not read the book at the time. The interview went very well. Then subsequent to that, Carr goes on her show, misrepresents my book's argument. I pointed that out to them both. He said he looked forward to the discussion of the book. 
Never had that happen. They never responded to my clarification on Twitter to the misrepresentation of my work. Uh, uh, so neither he nor Hunter responded and that never went on either. So my point in all this is that Carr is a legend. Carr has earned the, the, the right of the place he holds now. I just think he was, was out of line and out of pocket in dismissing logical, rational critique of somebody who should have, if not, if, if, has risen to the level of being his peer, somebody I think I've earned the respect to go beyond being dismissed on Twitter as if I have no no place or, or, or point uh, uh, or that the, the, the ideas I'm looking to represent have no place or point. So that was just that. Um, that that's, it, very, that's very loving hate. That's that's very loving hate. I mean, you know, it is what I it saw is. It, I saw it through the eyes of Riley. And I was trying to insta hate the whole thing. Yeah. Because I was like, this is battle rap. Like when Math and T Rex were supposed to battle, but Math really didn't have the battle dose. And he starts off and he said, I was supposed to battle T Rex, but that fool was scared. And that's the battle where, you know, Math aired out dose and it was a big tumble and Math became the bully. And I was like, woo, Math and Dose had these legendary battles and put battle rap, like put the smack in smack. So I thought, that's where you were taking this. Like, let's get into the ring and let's get ready to rub. Like, I was Red Man with it. I was Riley with it. I was Math with it. And then you said they no showed. And I was like, now what are we supposed to do with this? And that is why you got the Dr. October title because you went Reggie Jackson. With Reggie stepped to the plate in the World Series, Reggie was putting the ball out the park. Well, the one to be well, one one perhaps difference there is that the, the 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 comparison would be I never got to get up to the plate because there was no game. The game got called, so so Reggie got to go to the plate and hit home runs. My my point is again, obviously I think I'm right, and whether it was with Carr or Johnson, but but I, I, although we weren't, I wasn't clear what John. I mean, I know where Johnson. I disagree, but but we never got the. My point is, I may think I'm right. But more importantly is that I think the community deserves rational, logical discussion, even in debate and disagreement. And when 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 people either uh, uh, perform on YouTube or become condescending in social media and don't want to actually engage on principled, substantive discussion, particularly with someone maybe on their left or with, within a particular range of disagreement. I think that's just not, that's just not. And, and so as I've consistently said, particularly in terms of Carr, his, his value is, 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 and even as I said to him in that Twitter exchange, he would have been so much more uh, uh, valuable to, to the conversation. I think instead of condescendingly dismissing me and, and uh, the other brother engaged in that dis discussion, uh, Dwayne Wong is, I believe, in his name. Uh, in in that moment, uh, Carr could have just simply said, "Look, I have I'm a, I'm t selecting a certain path. I'm acknowledging a tradition you all are representing. Here's why I disagree. Here's why I think." But he never even laid out the argument. So when I'm saying, "Please lay out this federal judge's argument," because I don't get it, he didn't do it. And when I found a Yale law professor. And, and and made my BTEC commentary on the basis of that law professor's argument as to why emphasis on the Supreme Court and federal and well Supreme Court and I think also federal judges but Supreme Court in general is not which is different from the federal bench I get it but the emphasis the point was emphasis on these benches doesn't help so-called minorities over time has not so my only thing was great we might get a, a better nominee from biden than trump but all of the other policies biden is going to support from war to africom to to policing to to no health care and all this other stuff i think overrides the positives of a federal so anyway that was a, I, i'm just saying it doesn't i may think i'm right i may be wrong the point is the discussion should occur and, and it wasn't happening and because of discussion i'm going to do nominee number five because i'll okay, do that go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 but but do do three and four, and then okay, I'll get. I got you. I got well, you. Let me let me just get this last point in, Byron. Go, go ahead, ahead, because I can't get out of Riley. <laughs> and I'm thinking, even in the immortal yeah. words words of Fat Joe, not even Pee Wee Kirkland could imagine this. My team didn't have to play to win the championship. <laughs> How you gonna say I'm coming to the Rutgers and not play ball? That's I'm funny. not gonna show up for the championship. That's funny. 
Fat Joe. All right, fair enough. Okay. So, so Ty, Dr. Burroughs, number one. I'm number two. Number three is Michael Jordan for The Last Dance. Uh, I know you ain't think we forgot about him, but but the we we laid some of it out earlier. The the, the, the there were so many tributaries of hate that were worthy of, of his nominee that you know his nomination that we we had to put him there. Uh, I watched a lot of this next one um, with great interest, uh, and I'm happy that she's on this nominee list. And that's Jaguar Wright. Again, we mentioned her earlier. Uh, this brilliant singer and and even MC from back in the day. Uh, a truth teller of neo soul industry for uh, uh, um, and she's nominated for keeping up the put keep to, because she kept pushing the truth and keep and keep putting out good music so she put out the truth or her truth if you want to describe it that way for allegedly for whatever about common about uh uh black thought and and not supporting malik b and be you know representing malik b <clears throat> and uh, you know, run it off for the Fallon money and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I thought she, she, she. I watched a lot of that actually. I thought she did a lot. So she, she. So go ahead, Doctor Burroughs, with our last nominee. You, 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 you're gonna right, lay. The it. last nominee is Doctor CBS for Wilkerson Review Twitter Stoppings. And I got Sharice Burden Stelly, who I really enjoyed your discussion with her. I had never heard of her. And I was very impressed with her level of, of intellect. However, I want to say, I don't think that she rises to the hate level that uh, deserves to be part of the hater of the year. I mean, her, her tweets are very good and very strong. Uh, but I thought that Boston Review article was very intellectual. And, and, and I mean, I understand that intellectual is going to write intellectual for an intellectual magazine. But I didn't feel the same power that I saw in those tweets. Like I thought those tweets were for black people and that Boston Review was from somebody else. I Look, I'm from the black press, right? If you want to call somebody an Aunt Jemima, call them an Aunt Jemima. <laughs> if you call somebody an Aunt Thomasina, call them an Aunt Thomasina. Now, and I'm not saying something I didn't already do because I went on Facebook and I wrote only one paragraph about Isabel Wilkerson because it was only worth one paragraph because her whole argument was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Now, that may not be as intellectual as Dr. CBS, but I think it's important to point out that when you, when you want to stand for your people, then you stand for your people. Mm -hmm. And if that means that Boston Review thinks you're polemical, then good, then let them think you're polemical. Because I, you know, coming out of Newark, New Jersey, I mean, you know, I can't help but uh, be a follower of Mary Baraka, who, you know, as as the as his son, the mayor said, you know, had more publications than the entire committee at Rutgers University that rejected him, right? Mary Baraka said what he wanted to say, and I think that if we're going to serve black people, I think that we should say what we want to say in Twitter, and then I think we should say what we want to say in front of them the way we would say it. And so I don't I don't think she's she's there yet. Now, many people say she's an emerging hater. I see the comments. She's an emerging hater. Well, maybe we should do an emerging hater award. Let's give her that. But I think until, you know, people really write for black people the way they write for black people, you know, and by the way, I mean, I I'm not picking on her. I mean, I spent all year attacking Eddie Glaude for doing this on MSNBC, right? He's very different on MSNBC than he is on WBLS. I think until black people really go and talk to black people in a tone that is black and whether white people like it or not, screw them. I think until we do that, we can't nominate those people for hater of the year. I just want to say, again, really respect her, respect her contribution, love the conversation you had with her, but I just wanted to make that clear. Very well taken. Point well taken, and 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 a number of people in the in the audience are suggesting you've just put yourself in the in first place just on that commentary alone. Uh, uh, so again, we'll recap. Right, right, right. Dr. Sharice Burden Stelly uh, for her CBS review and Twitter writings. Jaguar Wright for her truth telling on the neo soul industry. Michael Jordan for his Last Dance documentary. Jared Ball for Dr. Ock. A.K.H. Tober, Battle Acceptances for Umar and Carr, and Todd Stephen Burroughs for his challenge to nationalists to write more than one book or a book at all in his merciless book reviews. And I will add for this last commentary uh, about emerging hate awards. So this is it. The moment of truth, good people. 
uh, please get in the chat and, and raise your vote some more as we deliberate here. Uh, uh, doctors, Burroughs and Hate, where are we going with this? I, I can't even focus. <laughs> I had to mute myself. I've been laughing through this whole thing. This is hilarious. Far too much time on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Far yeah, too many things to hate in the world. All of it this morning. For and sure. it just comes down to this moment. Which one of the two are <laughs> hating the harder? Todd hating his way to the championship. <laughs> you uh, know, if this, if this award had come out in October, I would have said there's no possible way Jared cannot win <laughs> with the two no-shows. I mean, that my word is for Jared with the two no-shows. But, but at the same time, <laughs> to, be, to then be invited to the party and to be like, none of y'all deserve to be at the party that you threw, celebrating what you did in 1994, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm. I, you know, I gotta, I gotta go with that. I'm feeling the sway of the crowd of Doctor Hate, and and I'm thinking, you know, Doctor Burroughs, if you didn't have it in the bag already, I think I did. Look, I had a strong year. There's no doubt about it. I had a very hateful year. I worked hard. I earned my nomination. I deserve that much. I had a strong October, but. The hater of the year is a year long award. You got to, you know, from beginning to end. And Dr. Burroughs, you from your, your, I, I can't even, you, cause you didn't even give me all of them at imixwithilike.org. You had a number of reviews you kept for yourself at drums, uh, uh, drums in the global village.com. Uh, but, but you've been consistently hating all year. And when you step into a Zoom call, you know, I can I can go back and forth with Carr on Twitter at, and I can, you know, have a non an indirect, never scheduled, never fully planned out non-debate with Umar. But when you go live and direct in front of a room, it was like eight, nine, ten, twelve on screen senior scholars and writers and, and activists and tell them all they have just not, I mean. And with, with substance and accuracy, tell them all they haven't stepped up. That the bottom line was they had visited Africa more than the primary source section of their libraries, and that's just true. And then you got one-liners like that. I got I, you know, I, I think A, I agree we could we could give the sub uh 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 emerging hater of the year to 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 you know uh, a pre-category to Dr. CBS. I want to strongly recommend her for that. Emerging hater of the year. She, she, can, she can have it. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah. let's, 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 let's let put just, it on there. Let's put it on. Let there. me just warn y'all. That's a lot of pressure to put on her. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. Uh, she will. Uh, she, will uh, she will rise to the the occasion because again, I love her Twitter feed. Okay, but this is a different game to be playing right now, Ty. I had to take it to Rucker because it's not the NBA. <laughs> you are not playing for checks. Todd is an academic. Who don't have a university check to be quiet around, who doesn't have any grants that have to control what he does. Todd is a genuine intellectual who can no one can tell what he can write, the way he should write it, and when that joint needs to be done. And he's been publishing without the threat of perishing. And it's a dangerous field to be in. I would not want to put that on somebody to be like, you know what? I want you to step into this ring. And you know what? You ain't gonna win nothing but a hate award. I will even I will even make my own argument because what what Dr. Ball forgot is that I did some hate on even the Mumia movement in Medium. That's right. My, my first piece on Medium was a critical piece on the on the Mumia movement, and you know even our, our conversations with Lynn Washington, uh, you know I had to I had to find out who my friends were in the Mumia movement. So yeah, okay, I, I I'm, I'm starting so, to understand the argument here. There it is. Congratulations, thank you, thank you. Dr. Burroughs, for you. taking home the 2020 Hubert Henry Harrison Hater of the Year Award. It is much deserved and well earned. Congratulations. Uh, I, I couldn't have lost to a better competitor. 
And I just want to say that my, my coming book review on Hubert Henry Harrison is filled with a lot of hate. So I, I think that I will continue the tradition and start 2021 off on the right foot. Start it on the right foot. Oh, well, wait a second. Wait a second then. If we're doing that, then an emerging hater of the year gotta be Brian Crawford. Well, we'll 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 let folks know about that as we we bring Brian back back to the platform. Uh uh, because he's already in line to hate. Uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll do that, but listen, I, cause I, we, we, we do have to wrap, but we've been here for a minute. Uh, and I really want to thank before we do, I want to thank the two of you for, uh, coming back, putting this together. It is, it is a lot less easy than maybe people realize. I want to thank certainly all of these folks for sticking with us. Some who have been here for the entire three hours, the numbers of, of live viewers has been strong throughout. I really appreciate that. Certainly. I know we all do. Uh, and again, we just want to, sir, I at least want to say, we want to remind everybody this is satirical meant for comedy. Even when there is legit disagreement, it is all for the, for the, for the, as we started off with <clears throat> to in, appreciate the rapier knife of revolutionary criticism, uh, so that we can maybe advance a little bit better, have a little fun hating on the last year and on each other. So, uh, anyway, those are my last words. Uh, cause I know it, we, we do need to wrap up. I want to give the two of you any last words. And again, I'm, I'm deeply appreciative of those who, who stick stuck with us. Those who join the channel, please join, like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. But, but thanks anyway, fellas, go ahead. Anything. My, my last words are this, um, about a week ago, I got up early on a Saturday morning and I, I you know, was doing some stuff. So I, I put on your interview with uh, Jerry Perry, uh, uh, Jeffrey Perry. And it was weird because I was, I was making breakfast and I had a, that kind of warm feeling, you know, and, and, but it was familiar. I said, wow, you know, wh why am I feeling so happy? Right. And I realized it was the same warm feeling I had in my early 20s when I was watching Like It Is. And so I want to congratulate you, Dr. Ball, for doing this amazing body of work. And I think, again, I, I've said it to you privately. I've said it to you on Twitter. I've said to you, I've said to you here. I think you're five years away from joining the Hall of Fame of Gil Noble, Mr. Belt Middleton, and those people who have you know, taken their lives to make sure that our struggles have been documented. So I just wanted to thank you for that publicly and to tell you, that because I because I, I I've never even told you that, that last week, but I wanted to tell you that in front of this audience because I wanted people to understand how serious you are and how uncelebrated you are, even in spaces that claim the same things that you claim. And so I just wanted to, to say that as my well, I appreciate that. Look, I seriously appreciate that. Those are two 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 legends and idols of mine for sure. And through you, I got to meet Gil Noble. So I appreciate that. But also because I mean, damn, I can't even win win the hater year on my own platform. So so I am glad to get some recognition for something. Anyway, but anyway, yeah. Uh, Dr. Hate man, you wanna you wanna <laughs> <laughs> No, I just like a good hate awards. That's all. Nothing left for it. Listen, if anybody's left at the end of 2021, we'll all get back and do it again. Right on. All right, good people. As always, like Fred Hampton used to say to you, we say peace if you're willing to fight for it. Thanks again. Congratulations to all the nominees and all the winners and to, to, to Dr. Burroughs for winning Hater of the Year. Uh, uh, you know, take home the swag and all the all the, the accoutrement that go with it. But anyway, uh, a lot more coming up at the channel, at this at this platform. Please go to our mixwhatilike.org to not miss anything. And again, as usual, as we as always, as Fred Hampton used to say to you, we say peace if you're willing to fight for it. So peace, everybody. We'll catch you next time. I mix what I, I, mix, I like, I what mix, I like.